It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Richard Campbell are here. We'll get their take on what happened this weekend at OpenAI and who was the ultimate winner. I think you might be able to guess. We'll also uh, talk about getting the European edition of Windows and why you might want that. Then we'll celebrate the 25th anniversary of a video game classic and tell you how you can get it for just 99 cents. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therada and Richard Campbell. Episode 856, recorded Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. Sunglasses for your whiskey. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Cashfly, delivering rich media content up to 159% faster than other major CDNs. Join Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Your website visitors will love Cashfly's lag-free video loading, hyper-fast downloads, and friction-free transaction processing. Learn how to get your first month free at cashfly.com slash twit. It's time for Windows Weekly. Yes. The show we talk all about open AI for hours. No, it's all about Windows. Huh. It's all about Mac. And, no, it's all about uh, Microsoft. That's it. That's Paul Therai. Microsoft. Back in McCungy. Are you in the new house? Lower. I am in Lower McCungy. He's back in Lower McCungy. The heart of I the last Lehigh was Valley. was in Lower McCungy back in, I guess, March. So you're near your old house? Yeah, I'm across the street. No. Actually. Well, it crosses you from the development. It's uh, it's it's oh, that's the next block over. Oh, that's yeah. hysterical. The people who moved us were like, "Did you just used to live here?" Just because <laughs> they, they were like, they remembered it from. We just you moved know? you. Anyway, this is this is a man who loves moving way too much. Um, <laughs> good at it. He is good at. He's gotten very good at it. Also, there on your right, there, that's Richard Campbell. He's not moving anymore. He's on. No. In his, uh, he also moved, though, actually. I mean, beautiful. Uh, Richard's yeah, no. probably pretty good at it now. He's I living in the Lake Cottage there in Madeira Park, British Columbia. Yep. Together they you. form the team that makes Windows Weekly shine. <laughs> so I was away for the weekend. You might know this. Yeah. Uh, for the, I flew uh, home on Friday because yeah. that's when everything happens. Yeah. I was wow. in Las Vegas. Back of a weekend. Ironically, I was there for the F1 race. So was, uh, I found out, so was Sam Altman. Yeah. Uh, when he was called to a uh, a Google Meet at noon on Friday, <laughs> and fired the hookers and blow, <laughs> he flew home. I stayed for the race. He probably had more fun uh, so, because it's now over, or is it? I don't know what to say. So there, are, there are two ways we could approach this and say uh, when we last left you Wednesday, mm -hmm. and <laughs> everything that's happened since, nothing has changed. We could say that, uh, or no, we could spend an hour on it, because that's honestly, not true. I don't think that it's that's not true. Exactly You're right. right. Thank you for catching yeah. that. Um, a lot of things have changed, um, and we don't know the full tale on that. And the yet, Microsoft so. angle, of course, is is big in this because this is uh, incredible. Yeah. They're 49 percent owner of the for profit portion of OpenAI. Yes. They also will will be. They've still not finished the 10 billion investment. There's trenches oh. and things. Oh, so they don't get it until they uh, give them all of the yeah, money. There's a whole, there's a whole uh, process okay. here. But, you know, the thing to remember is that everything OpenAI is doing is running on Azure. Yeah. Don't make Uncle Satya angry. That would be well, bad. And we heard, we don't know, but that Uncle Satya was pretty mad. Pretty hoppy pretty mad. mad. So they this is a guy who if you just sit in the audience and watch him, you would think he's this cold, calculating, slow-moving robot <laughs> and then this weekend he was like Superman. Now listen, and, uh, <laughs> on Wednesday when we did the show, we had just seen Satya Nadella do a keynote where he presented Microsoft's custom hardware for doing machine learning and mm -hmm. then brought out the CEO of NVIDIA to tell him how important the relationship was. Yeah. So, and I, and I, at that well, point, I coined the phrase like, I don't know about this badass Satya, but it's kind of cool. And then the weekend happens, and I'm like, "Well, so uh, go back to that because you you had a I, I, you had a really good take on that whole thing where Microsoft introduced their own hardware, which right. they eventually hope to do everything with, right? And then they said, and here are our partners, including the like you said, the CEO from Nvidia, who was on stage for quite a while, by the way, long time, and um, was about how great the relationship was. Yeah, 
<laughs> and I don't remember exactly the way you worded it. I think you might remember it, but you sort of said like, uh, here's a new hardware and here's the people we'll soon be getting rid of, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something to that. Effect. Although admittedly over a decade. Or yes, yes, yes. Like a lot is going to happen in the meantime. It's not, they can't make that many chips that fast to deploy them that quickly to all of those data centers. It's going right. to be a while. And I suspect you're going to be paying a premium to have access to Maya uh, machines for your, sure. your workflows. That's right. well, they're rare. Um, and I'm sure, you know, my big question, and we talked about this before, is when does NVIDIA have a new breakthrough? Like That's they've right. just been iterating on the machine and cashing in just fine very much a circumstance of the market than, than any. Yeah, no, it's like a ruck, lucky roll to die in Monopoly. You no. know, uh, they just landed on the right spot and yep. um, they had nothing to do with it. It wasn't any forethought or planning. It just happened and they've run with it. Great. And we'll talk yeah. about NVIDIA earnings later, but. They got park place at Boardwalk very early on and mm -hmm. and everybody needed a hotel. Just like that. <laughs> like, yep. Right. Um, yeah, they're the biggest chip maker in the world right now. Uh, yeah, by revenue, yeah. right? By market, uh, by, by, market, sure, by cap. market cap, by probably by market cap. Yeah. Like a way to join the trillion, the trillion cap club, club. But yeah, I just so, I, I'm used to Gates doing that. Gates was good for that sort of thing. I yep. did not expect Satya to do that, but uh, no one expected. So, no. uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of the stories I came out of Ignite with, and I've told everybody. I told my wife this, and she's looking at me like, you know, I don't care. But I, I but I, I, I. I got to see a bunch of people from Microsoft I haven't seen in over four in four years yeah and a, a lot of it there was a lot of hugging and, and catching up and everything but one of the things I talked about with not all of them but most of them I would say was what do you think about open AI do you think they're going to screw you over eventually and the reason I asked that question is because at the time our understanding we've learned more right over the weekend we learned a lot more about Microsoft's deal like how it works mm -hmm. it seemed a little one-sided to me. Um, the thing that Richard mentioned up front, which has always been the case, but is that the they have Azure, right? That OpenAI needs this Azure infrastructure. Um, so th that's the kind of two-way that are part of the two-way because, like, and we we learn more, but element to it. But two oh one, everyone I th I talked to was like, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. This seems dicey, you know. That OpenAI at some point because the the most OpenAI is so unusual, they make Google look like a normal tech company. You know? Oh no, it's totally bizarre. And that's unbelievable. Part of what happened this weekend was when the when the misperception internally about what right. the company was about came screaming. Yes, to right. Came to a, a so you right. Talk exactly. about that one sided deal. Think about the circumstances of the original deal when Kevin Scott went to the the fragments of OpenAI because they just had that pushing match with Elon Musk and he had lost and he was gone. Mm -hmm. They were grossly underfunded. GPT-2 came in GPT two came in four flavors because they had so little resource they couldn't even run their own models full size. Right. And suddenly Scott shows up and goes, hey, I got a billion bucks. Do one you think he was dressed up like Sco Scrooge McDuck? Do you think that was part of it? He had one little condition, move your workloads to Azure because that right. was his mission. Right. His mission was to find workloads for Azure. Where were and they running before? It's a great question. I don't know the answer. Yeah. I suspect Google, if I had to guess. Yeah, probably. Just knowing where they are and the culture mm -hmm. of the people around them, I bet anything. It's interesting because yeah, whoever I, had them before missed the boat, missed the bet, right? They could have said, well, well I, but remember at work. that time. Right, right, right. Well, they were not. It was a, it was a kooky non nonprofit startup. It's still. It's still, there's it still that element to it. There, it's still five, one, six, three. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to use AI to, to advance humanity, right? Yeah. To make life better for humanity. Safely, by was, the way. Was, yeah, yeah. Open AI was a response to Google brain, right? right? When yeah. Google grabbed up Jeff Hinton and Skuskavar, right. which is where he comes from, right? He was part of that whole team that became Google brain. That's when Elon and Gates and even Stephen Hawking were all on a letter saying like, these technologies need to be do, done more visibly because they they represent yeah, transparently. Yeah. Yep. So OpenAI was supposed to be this ridiculous, hopeless token of yeah. an open version of these technologies. Okay, okay, here's a thing. Like it'll be fine. It, it wasn't supposed to work. This wasn't right. supposed to, <laughs> this was supposed this to does, be cover. It, it reads like an Asimov story. Um yeah. this, I found this, it, uh, one of the early uh, robot stories, right? Um so 
Yeah, I, I, th there's a whole governance model they have. There, uh, there's it's a strange company, and and Microsoft's deal with them, even now that we know more, was still really bizarre. Forty nine percent of the uh, for profit part of the company, which is one of the Sam Altman things, right? He rolled that out. Uh, probably against the wishes of a lot of the people on the board. I'm sure there was a lot of controversy there. Oh, right? It's an absolute subversion of their original charter because their original charter was stupid. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it, so, you know, I mean, this is real. I think this is what really happened is that you have, on the one hand, uh, effective altruists who were really concerned about the safety of open a of uh, AI in general, especially AGI, mm -hmm. didn't want it to get in the hands of big tech. That, you know, Elon was, was one of those. always going to get in the hands of big yeah, tech. Okay, yeah, and we if, know this, but Elon was one of them. They f they formed yeah. OpenAI uh, with Sam Altman and uh, uh, Ilya Sutskever and others. And so there was that, you know, effective altruism, be safe group. But, but been it, a, it I got so expensive, the, especially after Elon pulled his money, right. that there had to be this for-profit arm or there wouldn't have... You couldn't. Yeah, have, it wouldn't have lasted. It wouldn't it have, lasted. have kept going. Yeah. And this was a tension between the two. And Sam Altman and Greg Brockman were the for-profit guys. The board, the remaining board, uh, yeah. no longer there, by the way, except for one. Right. Uh, was uh, the effective altruist nonprofit group. And I think there's been this internal struggle all along. Ever since we're gonna we're gonna hear a lot more about that. And yeah. most know, of the reporting ahead, says that, right? The, everybody yeah. who's who's dug into it says. The New York Times had an article today. Said this tension's been going on forever. Yeah. Oh sure. But the thing is, so given the fact that this is going to get into the hands of big tech, right? You can you can sort of. Well, uh, I'm kind of on the side of the, with, of the open uh, right? of the of the effective altruists. Effective altruism. No, of course Sam Bankman but... Fried is 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 a little bit uh, tarnished. But the idea that maybe a we should bit. we shouldn't <laughs> let Google, Microsoft, uh, Amazon own. If if we are going to be able to create AGI, right? And you know we're I'm skeptical. there's no evidence of that. Yeah, I'm skeptical. Yep. But let's say you believe that, which Sutskiver does believe. His chant mm. was last year at the company Christmas party: "Feel the AGI, feel the AGI," and most of the most of the company went along with that. So if you believe that, then it would be not unreasonable to say, you know, guys, we really got to be careful. This could be. Uh, this is the existential you know, threat. That's a that's a real vacuum to live in. To yeah. I mean, well, but a lot so, of them live in it. That's right. I, well, okay, but the capitalist look, one. Look, it's clear the capitalist one. The for profit. Yeah, but folks yeah, there won. there are two parts to it. One is you have this kind of really strange um, situation where Microsoft owns forty nine percent of the for profit part of the company has no decision-making capability no one on the board no nothing like there's it it seemed like i said very one side we now know more there's a little more to it than that but um that it always seemed like an incredible just very unique unprecedented type of arrangement you know okay whatever well but again open AI had, had, had microsoft over a barrel they needed microsoft's they needed the azure credits microsoft thought hey if they got ag i think they had like each other over there. a barrel i think the, yeah, yeah. It was the, the nuance mutual. here is that we 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 viewed it as very one-sided before and now we realize it was a two-way thing but microsoft so, was willing to do this kind of odd one-sided 49 percent of whatever yeah because but, they thought but, there was a lots of concessions uh, they got concessions that kept things safe for example if this thing fell apart they kept the intellectual property yeah, for themselves they could right. keep going and and, and continue right. with themselves that's microsoft right. has the capacity to uh, make that happen. So that's that's one thing. But when you look at big tech, honestly, there's only a couple of companies that, this is a strange thing to say because big companies are all terrible, obviously, but when you sort of think of it from an ethical perspective, um, Microsoft is on the list uh, and maybe Apple, although I think a lot of what Apple does is really crappy, but, but, Apple, but what Apple lacks is the type of horsepower and infrastructure that's needed by this infrastructure. And um, I think they went with the only company that, well, Amazon, I mean, well, you give up your scruples. Amazon could have made sense, I guess. But um, I think I don't, it, but the Sam, Sam, nature of Azure makes it perfect. Who made this deal with Microsoft, I'm sure, never was, yeah, never was, I think, quickly got out of that effective altruist, oh, we got to keep this no, safe No, but you still thing. have to market it, right? So he was the guy who was on stage. He was the marketer, essentially. You know, he became the face, right? He was the Steve Jobs, right? So- yeah. In that context, we think of it from the outside of the company. He's selling 
us uh, and Microsoft and whoever else on this. But, you know, there's a second part to that, and that's him selling the board. The people he knows are the way you've just described, you know, that he has to, well, that's, he has to make this make attention. sense for yeah. everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. And in fact, the thing is, the board was divided equally because uh, you had Brockman and Altman and Sutskever, and then you had the three researchers, the academics. Nobody, by the way, had shares of the company because they didn't want to give him a profit well, again, motive. It's an right? incredible orchestration. I, yeah. They didn't want to give him a profit motive. When Sutskever yeah. defected and went over to the effective altruist safe AI guys, that was it. Uh -huh. He had a four to two majority. They got rid of Brockman and Altman. And I think they were completely heedless of the, of the, you know, the cost. The idea that anybody be upset about that. Like, well, they incredible. may have even known. I think they really feel like this is dangerous, and we got to do something. Yeah. He, and I mean, they did. They weren't. Pay, they did it before the market closed. I mean, I I know why Satya was pissed off. He they lost did billions it on the dollars. last day of Microsoft's biggest trade show. Yes. Yeah. Right. Which well, by the way, I'll just remind everyone, the machine learning models was all yeah. about AI. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they weren't I, paying any attention was, to that because their job wasn't. To what pay did attention. you think the investors oh. in this company yeah. were going to do? Well, they didn't, I can tell you what they did because it took seven or five days. Or whatever long. They may have known. Yeah. In fact, I suspect they did know. They're not stupid. But they said, mm -hmm. look, we got to do this. It's our last chance to do this safely. And they lost. Well, it is now. Right. Like they've destroyed any opportunity to have influence at all at this point. Like this is the mistake. Well, that's, and that's that, the kill. That's there was the kick. a dozen ways right. to do this. Arguably, this was the dumbest. Well, story. I suspect they've been now doing they it for not. a year. I think they'd been doing it for a long time. Just in effect, were, I, uh, and they couldn't get and they couldn't get samples. They're worse off than they were a year ago. I, I don't. Horrible. What they? But that was this was a, a terrible miscalculation. Yeah. Um, well, and this, you know, in, in, irrespective of how angry Uncle Satch is and, <laughs> and so forth, yep. the entire company rebelled against it. I know going to have the, mass resignations in the 80 90 percent range i think it was 90 all oh, close to 95 percent yeah. right did, course, did you not have a the, handle on the where the people again, on the pulse of the they company they didn't care they yeah. had to I, I, they were no, but the they, company disappears I know. when you do look, that they look you got to put yourself in their mindset no 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 listen I, the, they had this big no. switch they thought agi was imminent and they were saving yeah, humanity but, by but throwing Leo, the switch, but even not. though it imploded. See, the, the problem is they've already given away the keys to the castle. That's the point. If open AI disappears because Sam Altman and George or Greg or whatever his name is and the other 700 and whatever employees all go to Microsoft, which, by the way, 10 days ago, if you had said Microsoft's going to try to buy open AI, ha, ha, no, you're not. Antitrust, yada, right. yada, yada. No, this Can't stop this from perfect happening. for Microsoft. This is right. But, but I, 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 have, you, I, I think there's a... On board. There's a genuine uh, question, and uh, Matthew Prince brought this up, the uh, CEO of uh, whatchamacallit. Um, he, uh, <laughs> you yep. know who I'm talking about. He, <laughs> I can never remember their name. Freddie Prince's brother. Yep, Freddie's on. brother. Uh, he said, <laughs> do, do these people really want to go and make an AI that gets generates better pivot tables in Excel? These people didn't come to open AI because they, no, they're on a okay. mission to Guys, create AGI. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Microsoft has something you may have heard of called Microsoft Research. They weren't going to go and work in the Excel team. They were going to go and work in an advanced AI research. They, they were, were going to recreate OpenAI. They open were probably AI. going to have all of their salaries double, too. You know, sure. OpenAI is going to buy revenue-wise. Suddenly, one of the largest companies on the planet mm -hmm. wants to employ you on mass. But these, to work on these people weren't work working on? for a nonprofit by accident. They could have gone anywhere and made that kind of yeah. money. No, they were working in OpenAI right, right. because they I believed in this principle of safe Certainly 95 percent of them don't well they were right. no no they well, were no they didn't say they were no they didn't say they were going to I work think, for microsoft they said we are loyal but to they, they, come on. They, but they but they but absolutely I think the would have they came up once altman was going to work at microsoft that's when you saw you if know, they, they were if they were serious about worrying about the thing you're saying they're worrying about they would not have signed that letter they would have stayed at the company because it would have done what they had wanted well, they were true. ready to go the the, you know? the, uh, the only condition in that letter, as I remember, was that the board be fired, which board it now leaves, has, which the board it now leaves, has, and Altman comes much. back. <laughs> Except for yeah. weirdly, the Quora guy, he's still there. Yeah. Um, so they, here's the. By thing. the way, here's they fired the both women on the board, and replaced okay. them with Larry <laughs> Summers, who's notorious for saying women aren't any good yeah. at STEM, when he was president right. at Harvard. So yeah, if the, you're the one Barbie of those math is hard thing. Yeah. yeah. If you're Tim um, Gebru or Margaret Mitchell and worried about 
uh, AI and its harms, that's this is not good news at all. But, okay, so but listen, there are two there are two parts. This this would have been true if they'd gone to Microsoft. It's absolutely true that they're staying at OpenAI. The one, one is this altruistic benefit mankind do it safely aspect. The other one is the commercial aspect. And uh, th this is Microsoft too, by the way. I mean, and I, I don't just mean in the Microsoft research sense. I mean, Microsoft does a lot of um, a talk about responsible AI, right? This is a big marketing message for them. They've been doing this, not do, just this year. They've been talking them? about this for a while. You know what? I can't, I, I, they are beholden. Do I believe them? I mean, it's it's such a hard thing to say because it's um, because both sides exist at the company, right? Yeah. So the question is, you you know, you were talking about pivot tables or background removal in an image or something like that. All that stuff's cute. Like this isn't going to end humanity, right? So can we can both of those things coexist? Can there be a responsible hand on the till, say, or the helm or the whatever it is like, um, that will be able to differentiate between these things and uh, not try to commercialize something horribly dangerous. This is a company, by the way, that refused to give facial recognition software to police departments because it was racially insensitive, mm -hmm. right? They just said this will be used for bad. It, it, it's skewed. Can't not in the wrong direction. Right. They, they, they did that. They, they, so do I believe it? I mean, I, I believe it, it's possible. I, it, there's no way to kind of predict the future, but I mean, um, I do believe that Microsoft is semi-unique among big tech in that there is, I hate even saying this because they're a company and they're terrible, but a, a, a more of an ethical streak there than I see elsewhere. And I, I do think that Satch's motivation is we want to control this because the alternatives are worse. That's right. You don't want Google getting this. You don't want Amazon getting it. Um, so I, I, this is... Well, let me ask our listeners... <laughs> Mm. Mm. Okay. Do you want Microsoft? <laughs> no, but come on. But your listen, but but not your listeners. I'm sorry. Some your listeners, listeners would have said, "I don't listeners. want Microsoft doing GitHub. I don't want Microsoft getting true. Mojang and taking Minecraft away." Mm. It, th this company actually has done well by this. Yeah, but world. this is a significantly more powerful. Yes, it is, and that's why it's important. This is this is <laughs> you know? like giving them the nuclear codes. But it's not. But see, you're. What are you talking about? Well, they don't get they don't have nuclear codes. It, no, if if it's a, if okay, look, a lot of this comes down to do you believe there'll be an AGI? That's really a no. lot of it comes down to that. If you don't, then go have some fun. With I believe there was going to be a flying car, and I don't have that. <laughs> so how is this? But these people are true believers. Thing. The open AI folks are true believers. Yeah, those guys are wearing sneakers and going to a spaceship. They're scary. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're right. No. You know, if they're, uh, if you they're wrong, then I don't strongly. care if Microsoft gets it. That's fine. Well, how would you, you, you if they're right, we got to sit here and decide if they're right or wrong. We don't know. Well, yeah, we don't know. And it's, I mean, there's every evidence that LLMs are not it. Doesn't mean they're not going to make something else and go further. Yeah, right. But the technology that Microsoft is exercising on an engineering practice is a language manipulation technology. It's got nothing right. to do with consciousness. It's got nothing to do with, with will. It just manipulates language. Now we, we, we live in a world that into a lot of things. But so not real. Back in October, uh, Google came out with their Pixel Eight line of phones, and they brought a bunch of reviewers in. They all gave them devices and everything, and they all went and they reviewed the devices, except for, by the way, two of the nation's biggest newspapers, the New York Times and the Washington Post. They took their free devices, went home, and wrote articles about the evils of AI about how you're going to, these people with pixel phones are altering reality. There used to be a little kid ruining the background of this photo and you took him out of there and that's not right. And I, I'm not kidding. This is, that was all they wrote about it. And that's, this is what happens when hysteria takes over for common sense. That's ridiculous. Are you telling me, I, I'm taking a group photo of, it could be my four people in my family. It could be a reunion with 25 people. One person invariably is not smiling or is looking the wrong way or blinked at the wrong time. You're telling me that tapping on the screen and fixing that is some no, space-time no. dilemma? No, no. that's fine. <laughs> you know, or whatever. Like, have seriously? Go ahead and have That's that. what you're worried about? That's not what I'm worried about. No, and, it's not what you're And you know, and I, you but, know, like, like you, Richard, I'm a skeptic, uh, mm -hmm. but... On the other hand, um, is it worth toying with? I mean, what if what if you could create an yes. AGI? If you could create a uh, machine intelligence that reasoned as well as a human or better, 
And by the way, if it could reason as well as a human, it would quickly re reason better yes. than a human. And un inevitably, it would become an altruistic, benef beneficial entity. Well, we it's don't only know. Do you, you well, think so? Movies, I don't know. Absolutely. Because that's what intelligence leads to. I hope it's so. It's the that leads to violence. Okay. Um, it certainly will change everything, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, except that there's absolutely no sight on the horizon of it being true. You know, a freaking asteroid hitting the planet will change everything, too. I guess so. Right. All right. right. All right. But these, again, right. well, the people who are doing, who are creating the software arriving. believe it. The people who are creating yeah. the software but believe it. But why, why does that matter? The people yeah. who are well, they're the involved closest in to it. Israel and uh, well, Hamas the believe ones, that. And, and they're the, the ones who are you know, motivated to make more money from it. Believing it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. I, I, that doesn't, I wouldn't use that as a yeah. rationale. Not a good metric. Yeah. No. Well, I there's nothing Belief to is, worry about if AGI is not uh, on the horizon. Then then Microsoft absolutely should. Can we just I, I think this. we need to focus on the thing that's really important here, which I think we will all agree is yeah. uh, Microsoft share price. So <laughs> if we <laughs> <clears throat> Well, it it tanked but it, it's come back right now. I mean it tanked at first. It tanked I on Friday. I, I don't actually follow it. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. know how it's I going. imagine I it's there was a, quite a bit of wealth uh Dis, yeah, dis, I think they're rapid yeah, I think they're going to be okay. Yeah, I, I, the interesting thing to me about this, other than the sheer drama and literally the unprecedented nature of a board, not just big tech, I mean just business, a board firing a CEO, big deal. The entire company basically says, "Okay, we're leaving unless you all quit." Yeah, bye bye. I don't think this has ever happened. I mean, certainly not at this scale. And then uh, you know the, the whole back and forth, just five six days tops, and now he's back. The board's gone. And you know there's going to be a big change to the board, and you, Microsoft's going to be part of it, guys. Yeah. Like you know, this is happening. It's Microsoft waltzed into this in some ways. I mean, look, they did invest and they saw the potential. I mean, of course, but you know, th they never saw this happening. Well, unless they knew more about the internals, but uh, they certainly didn't orchestrate it, right? A lot of people are like, oh, this is like Steve and Elop and uh, no, no, Nvidia or um, Nokia. No, it is nothing like that. Uh, Andy Anako, um, though, yesterday on Mockbrick Weekly, did point out that this is a trend, growing trend, especially in Silicon Valley, of worker mm -hmm. revolt. You know, they convinced Google not to, and Microsoft, by the way, not to sell yeah. stuff to the to the Defense Department because they didn't want to work right. on technologies that would help kill people. Uh, Actually, and, I, I don't know that Microsoft's employees were successful in that particular thing, but yeah. Well, they, they tried they, they to did. kill Jedi, didn't they? Yeah, I can't remember. They did. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it turned out the Defense Department killed Jedi, but that's yeah, another yeah, yeah, thank God for Amazon, right? I mean, how many times have we said that? But the workers, <laughs> uh, there's a workers' revolt, and technology workers have a lot yeah. of power because these engineers are pretty priceless commodities, right? This is the uh, Marie Antoinette moment for big tech. Could I be. Guess, or for, at least for Silicon well, That's about. an interesting way to put it, yeah. yeah. yeah right? you got to ah. ask yourself the question, who makes the cake? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was good. Well, okay. very good. That's a good way to put it. Um, I was going to say more like at some point, look, we're talking a lot about responsibility and ethics and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it is interesting that in each of those cases you cited, there were people who felt that the company they worked for was not the company they wanted to work for. Right. They tried to make That's right. some change from inside and that you have that power. Um, Microsoft, this is for customers, but Microsoft has shown itself uniquely pliable to feedback. Mm. Um, and I look over the past several years, not just Activision Blizzard, but uh, Brad Smith has come to the forefront uh, for a lot of stuff for Microsoft and uh, has risen in the ranks as a result. But he is a uh, there's there is an ethics angle to what they're doing. It could just be marketing. I, I we should admit that. But yeah. um, that is part of the story. I mean, we'll you know, we'll see. Mm, yeah, but also it is also unwise and rare for them to show how much clout they actually have. But just well, they had, this is but the, so listen, everyone watching this show and Richard and Leo especially understand mm -hmm. that over Microsoft's history, this usually came out of Bill Gates's mouth. But we've often heard the phrase "bet the company." Yeah, you know, we're betting the company on MSN. No, we're not. What are you talking? Come on, stop it. They are they are betting the company on this, right? This is um. This the is the first time they've chosen to lead in a long time. Yes, and it's it's refreshing on one level, but it's also real. I think one of the big conceptual battles I have with people who um, just kind of knee jerks it. Well, AI is just hype, you know, because it's going to be very easy to point to anything and say, "Look, they describe this as AI. It's just spell checking. It's, that's yeah. not AI." You know, oh, no, and believe yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a ton so, of hype without a doubt. 
Yep. Yeah. The but, large but language model sometimes, in the product. Like sometimes that. the hype is warranted. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's the thing. The problem is it it's often is it. Well, I often, I often uh, think back. It's not that long ago, so I'm, thank God my memory is not great. But the the marketing of five G was that you're going to be standing in line to get on the plane, and you're like, "Oh crap, I forgot to download a movie," and you go up to wherever and you download it. it goes zip because it's so fast. Yeah. And to my knowledge, no one on earth has ever done that. But uh, okay, great. <laughs> but you know that that was an example of the hype, not necessarily living up to the you know There's a uh, ton of, to reality of ai related hype that isn't going to come true agi being one of them but yeah you know, yeah there you go that could be a hype yep yep it's but here's the thing 4g sure we we we, we talked i think we talked about this right this this notion that every era at microsoft kind of uh informed the next era and so forth I, microsoft set it up itself up very nicely for this with this whole cloud computing thing which went on for a decade or more and i think this is them expressing what they think the next decade is going to look like, you know, yeah, no, and it's I going to be an advancement. And they look at this and here is a thing that lets us lead in all categories. If, the, yeah. if using Microsoft tooling around these large language models provides a, you know, depending on the numbers you look at 20 to 50 to 200% benefit in productivity, why would any company allow any employee to use anything else? Right. Right. The big, right. And, and the knee jerk reaction that people have, cause it is expensive, you know, compared to other kind of but monthly, getting cheaper, you know, one of the things that came out of ignite was reductions in prices. That's exactly price. right. Yeah. A, a very natural reaction to the cost and it looks like a, a viable avenue to pursue. So that, that stuff's great. Um, I think we'll, we're, we're, it's like everything else in technology. We're going to get there. I mentioned the, you know, uh, cellular access in Europe. It was such a nightmare. Yeah. And uh, the first year we did 2006 uh, or whatever yep. year that was compared to now. Uh, in it's Europe. like, ha, ha, you're, you get off the phone. You're like, ha, 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 welcome to Europe. You're covered. You know, it's like, it's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, it's this, these kind of things just happen and no. uh, it takes some time. People worked hard to make it come true. And yeah, drag I, no, no, it just happened, yeah. Richard. No one worked hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but, um, but anyway, the point is we all benefit from it, right? Yes. Yeah. Obviously there's a lot of computer science occurring, but um yeah, but that's really, AI. Yeah, really right. rare to have a technology that the office people are excited about. I know that the Azure so people weird. are also excited about. Yeah, the, I know it's it, very excited about. Like that. This is why, weird. and for and Windows guys like me, I'm excited. Like this is like AI is the tech, you know, the uh, the wave that floats all boats. It, it's it is that it's very interesting, and yeah. and there's always going to be the, the the kind of push. Um, in practical terms, the, the, the easy, the low hanging fruit is what about the job losses, you know, and I'll talk about stagecoach, uh, drivers and cigarette girls on planes and whatever. Yeah. Things come and go. We get it. But travel agents <laughs> travel. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. I, so yeah, that's a good example actually. Um, but th what it comes down to is we all have a job and we do whatever we do. This is going to have these little productivity benefits depending on what it is you do and, and how you do it uh that are going to be everywhere you know and um well, the, I, the, the person I who is a good typist got replaced by the person who's the good word processor user. yeah right. right i mean this and this is just more amplification these are better yeah. tools to allow more people to do more work quickly yeah. as well as to raise the average you know the best writers are still going to be better than any large language model Right. And a lot of really mediocre writers are going to be better. Oh, they're going to benefit from it uh, greatly. But, you know, it, I, I I think I complained about Word and maybe Grammarly a few weeks ago, whenever it was, yeah. about, you know, how that stuff goes off the rails a little bit. But um, even as a writer, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to turn this stuff off. I I, I still, I do rely on it. I mean, sure. uh, I, I, I'm smart enough or, I don't know, maybe uh, smart is not the right word. I'm experienced enough. Yeah. to understand how a sentence is constructed and that the thing it's suggesting is not in fact correct. That won't be true of other people. That's fine. But we all have our little areas, you know, and uh, for me, this is going to help with things that are not related to writing, but to rather the rest of the life, right? Which is professional and personal. Mm -hmm. um, I generated, I mean, I, I could actually draw sort of, I don't anymore, but um, I generated an image the other day for, an AI article I wrote actually, which is gorgeous. I mean, it's just astonishing. Yeah. I, mean, I love it. It's uh I could never have created that. Right. You know? 
Well, and I think, you know, you, you hit on the key parts, which is there's going to be a bunch of, of amplification of ability, but it's all going to be driven by a person. Yeah. You know, no, there is no intent behind software. There's only intent in people and they use, sometimes use software to express it. There was a, um, I don't remember the airline, I guess it doesn't matter, but there was a guy who was high on mushrooms or something like that, but he oh, got into the, the pilot, pilot cabin. No, he was a pilot. Well, he, he was, he was not flying the plane, no, but he was no, but like he the was co-pilot. A, he was, yeah. He, he was, was in the jump heading. seat or something. Yeah. Yeah, but he wanted to crash the plane, right? Yeah, so there will come a day that AI crashes a plane or does something okay. that causes a plane to crash. So something no like shrooms for AI. I think that's really important. No, no, no. That's not the message. Oh. The me but when that happens, it will be an error. It will be a mistake, yeah. right? But when this guy was going to crash the plane, this was deliberate. Yeah, it <laughs> like wasn't this a mistake. Is, this is the kind of thing we got to get out of the, you know, work out of the system, right? Yeah. Yeah, the three laws, exactly. Sicarius and uh, Discord is, you know, the three three laws of robotics, right? Um, and, uh, and which I, I think uh, fed right into uh, Arthur C. Clarke and 2001 and Hal, right? This yeah. the, the contorted logic that caused it to harm individuals because it thought this was the right thing to do or that it was following its orders. The problem right. is that the three laws of robotics are from Isaac Asimov and it's fiction <laughs> yeah in fact it's you know logically unsound and would not yeah. be the rules you would follow i am not going to listen to you guys <laughs> crap on asimov okay i'm just not going to do it i'm not going to do it no yeah. that's, that's <laughs> the right to make a good book yes and good books are not written about normalcy mm. they're written about abnormalcy i you know as i like right. you uh richard have been skeptical although you know steve gibson Mm -hmm. uh, believes that there will be an AGI because he says, and you know, there's a case to be made for this. That's all the human brain is, is a mechanical, you know, uh, you know, solving machine. And, uh, there's no reason why we couldn't at some point duplicate its complexity and create a better and one. I don't disagree with that. It's just, this ain't that. Right. I was going to say, I, I, the, I'm not the convinced of that I'm less sentences convinced than at this was. point. Well, how, what, yeah. how does the complexity of one of these systems map to the complexity of the human brain? It doesn't have to. This is the most important point that Ray Kurzweil made. Because I said, well, that's what I said. I said, I think there's something we do that's, quanti that's, that's quantifiably different than a machine yeah. could ever do. And he said, yeah, but if you can't tell the difference, what does it matter? And I, I have no answer listen, for that. Uh, how many? So everyone in the audience who has a pet could be a dog or a cat. Doesn't matter. It could be another kind of animal. You talk to this thing, yeah. right? That yeah, doesn't. You know, it doesn't understand you. It doesn't everything. understand you at all. Yeah, yeah. You, you know that there are uh, buttons you can buy for dogs where you train them supposedly to right. press on a specific button when they want a specific treat. That dog is thinking about a squirrel that's out in the driveway. <laughs> it has no idea what you're doing. It's just looking at you, saying, "Sometimes I'm over in this area, and for some reason, he gives me a treat." It has no connection with that thing. Um, so yeah, I. If if these are the people that are making this AI, we're going to be fine. <laughs> there's no there's no concerns. Um, so I don't know. I'm not saying there are no concerns, but um, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, uh, obviously, regulation is going to play into this. Uh, the United States and Europe are going to be a little more active. There was some country was it Italy or something that said, you know, let's just give it a two year pause, and, uh, a pass, sorry, and we'll just let it evolve. <laughs> it's yeah. like um, I don't know. That doesn't seem smart. I mean, it's, it, maybe we need to, you know, uh, move quickly uh, this time. I, mean, on the I think you've got to listen to the right complaints. You know, the best mm -hmm. scenario, the best piece of regulation, uh, regulatory yeah, ideas yeah. I've heard so far is publish your sources. What are you training the stats on? Now, I mean, that deals with that, that approach to some copyright issues, which I think are important. But if you, at least you know where the data comes from, that gives you some scope of what's it learning from. Anyway, look, we spent a half hour on this. I love that your conclusion is things are more or less the same, right? It looks like, I mean, the, the funny part is the board's out now. So I don't think it's know, the same. I think what happened is that the nonprofit safe version uh, of this company is gone. And well, because that, it was run by incompetent people who had themselves killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, well, I mean, for whatever uh, the, reason, they're, they're, the if, people if who this is an example from AGI, they couldn't prevent right. themselves from a tech CEO. The, the people who are hoping to make a, a safe. AGI are are gone, and so now it's you know big tech. Um, yeah, yeah. If you don't but, believe in AGI, then then there's really nothing to fear here. It's just a, you know it's, it's a spicy autocorrect. That's not what big tech is working on. In fact, they're not doing research at all. They're utilizing the technology they have in front of them to make products that people will pay for. Right. 
There are no scientists in the pattern. In general, you're looking at the, the AI scientists have said, hey, generative AI has hit the wall. Right. Let's go right. or something. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, certainly we've seen that AI winter happen multiple times. We've gone through the same hype cycle. The, the difference is that in each one of those winters, the engineers picked up the bits that you'd created so far and made it into products that were useful for people. Yeah, right. And look, from a from a Microsoft perspective, you got to remember the story of this year is that they'd been talking about AI, obviously, for a while. Uh, very late in the last year, Satya Nadella sent out that company-wide email and said, we are pivoting on this. Everybody get on board or you're leaving. And then they announced in February it, with bing which was like what are you doing but okay i know but whatever but then very <laughs> rapidly over the next you know march uh may june july and then into september now uh november with um microsoft ignite went from idea talk to rebranding twice <laughs> and product and well, i like that's in, this is real. I mean, it's real. That's the important thing to There's remember here. Satya do a Gates, do a trustworthy computing letter or an internet title wave computer letter. He's like, everybody will do. And the numbers I'm hearing in turn is like, there's 170 co pilots inside. Right. <laughs> and, and then I asked the person who we, we were talking about, it's like, you're not going to let all those out in the wild. Right. And right. Like, oh, no, no, we're not. Yeah. So, so but, did, but they did what their boss asked them to do go experiment. Right. The, the inevitable uh, comparison here is the .NET thing, right? We, we, and Richard knows the story better than anybody. But, you know, in the early 2000s that we we're pivoting on this, we're doing .NET. Everything's going to be .NET. It's going to be Windows.NET, Office.NET, it's going to be whatever, Windows Server.NET. And uh, I think the only product that actually went out in packaging with that name might, might have been Visual Studio, like yeah, one version, one I think. Yeah, yeah, one edition. There you go. 2002 and, um, Studio.NET, 2003. Yeah. They turned around on that one very quickly. So... When you hear about this AI thing at Microsoft, now you think, well, I've seen the story before. I know what's going to happen. And this is not what happened. So those, what do you say, 170 uh, co-pilots inside of Microsoft or whatever the number is, um, it will be consolidated down. I mean, even in the dinner table conversations we had with a certain group, they were saying, you know, we almost announced today, uh, that day, last week, two different products with different names that were basically 100% identical. Right. And someone that's, said, Hey, excuse me, th stop. these are the same thing. You don't go, yeah, that's dumb. And I, and that type of, it's happening fast. You know, from my perspective on the other side, I think of it as kind of a fog of war thing, but I mean, inside, my God, yeah, it's no, going to be even worse. You, you have, you, this you is your job. Marching orders from the boss. You get head mm -hmm. down and try and build this thing. Then you come up having succeeded. Right. It turns out that a whole bunch of other smart people have built pretty much the same thing. But that was yeah. also the goal. Like the upside to this is the, what is the commonality? What are the shareable pieces? What are the distinct bits? Right. You know, I think one of the conversations I certainly had on the run as side over last week was what's the sysadmin going to use these large <laughs> yes. And There's a bunch of interesting stuff that is, you know, I mean, there are going to be admin co-pilots. There are yeah. going to be um, policy adherence co-pilots, whatever the term is, uh, yeah, uh, of course. You you set some kind of a corporate structure. You're like this. Everything has to adhere to this. And well, you get back this to thing what goes are, out. What are LLMs good at? And summarization is one of them. Yes. Go through every all of the activity going on inside of the M365 graph and tell me what we what our actual baseline is. What do we really do? How many people interact with how many other people? Where does email typically flow? Like this software is great for that. And that opens the door to us giving a better quality of governance of building good baselines. Like. This is important stuff. It will make the system work more efficiently and resist yeah. hackers more effectively. Right, right. That, and, that, and that was, uh, I think it was pre-Ignite, but there was a, yeah, no, of course, it was the big trustworthy computing 2.0 announcement. They kind of said, look, hackers are using this stuff yeah. to infiltrate systems. We need to use the same technology to move just as quickly uh, to adapt. And, you know, sure. we've had uh, simplistic uh, versions of this kind of thinking back in, you know, 20 years ago, like uh, DEP, uh, the hardware, uh, the address, you know, on the fly address changing kind of things, which is just, you know, uh, kind of an automated, uh, you know, way, just a way to avoid something that's become at the time a common way to attack a machine uh, becomes part of the operating system when we move forward and whatever. We don't think about it anymore, but if you go into the old interfaces and windows, you can find it. It's still in there, right? Sure. Um, still in there. It's in the BIOS as well. The firmware. I, so 
I'm, it's going to be an interesting year without a doubt. Like, <laughs> yeah. doing the year in show, and it's, I've, we have to yep. talk about it. But we can talk about Windows too. You want to talk about Windows? Yeah. So, but just bottom line, Microsoft, big winner here, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, no and uh, and uh, if there is uh, a machine intelligence listening to this show, yeah, we love you, yeah. and we are we are ready and willing and able. <laughs> whatever you need to bud. further your aims. Whatever you need, it, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, let's take a break. Yes, we will talk about Windows next. Uh, but first, a word from Wix. This episode of <laughs> Windows Weekly is uh, brought to you by Wix Web Agencies. This one you're going to really like. Let me tell you about the newest thing, Wix. Studio, the platform that gives agencies total creative freedom to deliver complex client sites while still smashing deadlines. How? Well, first, let's talk about the design, the advanced design capabilities. With Wix Studio, you can build unique layouts with a revolutionary grid experience and watch as elements scale proportionally by default. No code animation and sparks of delight, while custom CSS gives total design control. And it doesn't stop there. Because Wix Studio can bring ambitious client projects to life in any industry with a fully integrated suite of business solutions. Everything's in there from e-com to events to bookings and more. And you can extend the capabilities even further with hundreds of APIs and integrations. You know what else? The workflows just make sense. There's the built-in AI tools, the centralized workspace, the on-canvas collaboration, the reuse of assets across sites, the seamless client handover. Yeah, just you can imagine the applause. But that's not all. Find out more, Wix.com slash studio. We thank Wix so much for supporting Windows Weekly. W-I-X, Wix.com slash studio. Uh, now, Richard yes. and Paul will revert to the previous versions of their AI to discuss Windows. A little roll, back. guys. Roll back. AI is evil. We have to stop it. Listen carefully. <laughs> <laughs> There's only a little time left. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Exactly. If you're hearing this message, it may already be too late. <laughs> I've read this script. I know this script. I love it. All right. Uh, Windows 11. Do we have Windows 11? We do. Um, we have Windows 10 too. This every all Windows uh, this week. So yeah, last week, Mike. So last week was the deadline for companies that wanted to appeal their gatekeeper designations under the Digital Markets Act in the EU. Right. This is the set of regulations put in place to uh, rein in the uh, abuses of big tech. Right. Um, which, you know, happens to all be American companies. Well, uh, not that's not true, uh, mostly American companies, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people see as some sort of a an issue. But, I mean, that's whatever, the reality. Um, as opposed to what, Chinese companies? Would that be better? Yeah, by, by dance is one of them, actually, yeah. yeah. Um, that's what, yeah, mostly United States. Uh, but by, by dance is Chinese. So most, well, I don't most, actually, I'm not really sure off the top of my head. So there were, like, what, six big tech companies and then 29, 39, whatever services. Uh, more could be coming. Uh, the EC, the European Commission, has opened investigations into other services and products to see if they would fall under this umbrella. Apple is strenuously fighting uh, getting iMessage in there, for example, right, um, which would force them to open that up, which I think would benefit mankind as much as AI, honestly. Um, but, okay. Microsoft declined to um, appeal. Um, they, ha they have uh, uh, gatekeeper status with Windows, obviously. And then there's some um, things that are kind of on the edge. Uh, Bing, Edge, right, might make the list. We'll see. Uh, this is basically product bundling the next generation, I guess, is one way to look at it. Um, if you have a dominant product or service and you have other products and services that you kind of pushing on consumers through that dominant product or service. Uh, you need to open that thing up so that third parties can get in there and have the same experience. And that gives users the choice to get out of your little walled garden. And in the context of Windows, Microsoft announced last week what that was going to look like. And it looks awesome. <laughs> the problem is you have to be in the EEA, EEA the European uh, Economic Area, 
to benefit from this. Although, you know, we're going to figure out workarounds. And in fact, based on Microsoft's description, it looks like almost anyone should be able to do this. But um, it's kind of the Windows 10 slash 11 that we always wanted, right? Um, when you think to the changes that Microsoft made in 10 and then the further changes they made in 11 and the way they restrict things, the way that they force you to use Edge even when you've chosen a different browser, uh, they don't let you turn off telemetry tracking, there's advertising in there, there's um, uh, crapware, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that, you know, it, it's not hard to come up with a list of like, well, this is this is what I don't like about Windows right now. It's kind of, you know, and... The debate we used to have was, you know, I don't mind that Microsoft is trying to make more money from its users. Like that's normal, it's business, but I just don't like the way they've gone about it. Um, but then this happens and it's kind of like when they stripped IE out of Windows in Europe and you realize that this thing that they said was impossible or was there for some good reason, you can take it all out and everything's fine. You know, so for example, in the widgets board today, it's a bunch of crap. Everyone knows this. No one would dispute this. Even Microsoft wouldn't dispute it if you were being honest. A lot of crap. And um, the only promise we've gotten to date was that someday maybe you'll be able to turn off the feed. And if you turn off the feed, what you'll have left is the the widgets, right? The, the Your calendar widget, your weather widget. And that might actually be kind of useful. That's kind of interesting on its own. But now, thanks to the EU, they're going to offer uh, this widget board as kind of a plug-in not plug and play, like a pluggable interface where a third party service that has a news feed could come in and you could use their service instead of uh, whatever the thing is called. It's probably you have to wait for MSN. If this works, they won't roll it out everywhere because it actually seems like a better idea. Right. Right. No, they're not. They're definitely not rolling it out everywhere. That's, that, no, that's no, not my... now, but it's like, I think it's like, well, we're being forced to do this. Let's do it where we have to be compliant. Yeah. Then they'll assess it. Like if it is. Okay. I, I, I hope to God. <laughs> that they make this available everywhere not, because in the end, it's not in their best interest to make more than one version right like minimizing versions is a big thing that's why they have shorter life yeah and and it's 2023 right so we are eight years into the windows 10 slash 11 experiment and they have a lot of data that will show i believe <laughs> very strongly that uh, this stuff hasn't worked right yeah. that their aggressive policies of pushing people toward things results in the kind of click that um Steven Sanofsky once called out, right? When he canceled uh, Media Center as part of Windows 8, I think it was. A lot of feed, a lot of complaints, just like the people complaining about not putting the start, you know, the taskbar or whatever on different sides of the screen. Right. Yeah. In this little enthusiast community we're in, there's a lot of complaints, but he's like, look, 2% of people ever clicked on it and 99.99999% of them, it came up and they were like, nope. And they closed it because they clicked on it by mistake or they just wanted to see what it was. That's what those things are. And I think that all their little attempts to grow engagement and, and drive a little more dollar, I don't think it's worked. Um, and I think that's what they're going to find out. So I, I, and in Windows so 11, especially. Go here and look at their data. Yeah. And, I, and I think the other part of this is that sometimes is that a company like this, you end up with perverse incentives where I'm not actually incented to serve the customer well. I'm incented to, to, to execute on my that's key right. metrics. If my key metrics are, oh, I, you know, to get the clicks and I'm only getting one half of 1%, send it to everybody. That'll still get me there. Right. I, you know, we'll see. I, I just, I, I went, I was on the plane when I did this on the way home, but I, I went down the list and I, I also had brought up the, uh, the DMA requirements so I could kind of say, well, this is why they're doing this. And, and this is, you know, you can kind of, you could, it could pretty easily like draw the parallel. I feel like you're making a case for taking your piece, your new buying a new PC in the EU, mm -hmm. configuring it there so you get these features and then taking it home. Well, I'll tell you how how I'm really going to do it. Most likely is uh, buy my PC here, and then when I configure it, go. Do, 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 oh, I'm in the I'm, EEA. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, because it looks it, like that's actually going to work. So network, that's kind of network VPNs that you appear to be coming from the EU and configure. For yes, them. right. That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. We already have a, a, a hack is a strong word. It's like a little workaround you can do. Um, in Windows setup, where instead of, you know, in my case, our, you know, region and everything comes up to the United States English, mm -hmm. um, you can change it to, I can't remember the phrase anymore, but it just says like uh, English world or something. It's just like a very vague thing. And then it doesn't know where you live, so it can't market all this crap at you. So setup goes by quicker. And then you don't get all the crap or in the bundling stuff because they don't know where you're from and they can't give you the right stuff. Right. And they sell their um, advertising on a geolocation. Yeah. So this is, uh, this looks to me like it's going to be something like that. I mean, obviously for people in our 
corner of the world, uh, providing tips about this is going to become big, but not big business. We're not going to make money off it because, but it's going to become a big thing because, um, you know, it can help people have a cleaner windows experience. Like the one they kind of remember, you know, from back in the day or whatever. Um, so we'll see, you know, we'll see how this all works out, but it's, uh, it's fascinating. We're starting to see big tech companies react to it's usually the EU, right? To regulation. Oh, they, um, they seem to be the most able to actually get through things as yeah. cumbersome as their infrastructure is for how they pass these regulations. Yeah, you could argue that yeah. Apple's uh, announced their yeah, USB-C. RCS. No, yeah. RCS. Oh, RCS is they're going to make it, the same thing. They're, I mean. they're going to be compatible with Android. And it's almost certainly because of the DMA. Yeah. Right. Right. Which is. Uh, it reminds I, us you can make the you can press these companies to do yes. to benefit you know, yeah, I, God forbid, is, like actually to show up and and maybe evaluate what they're doing and stop the bad stuff. What what a theory! Like, if only there was a form of regulation for that. Oh, there is. You know, I mean, it's very clear. You know that Apple, in this case, in fact, there's even smoking gun emails, didn't want to support um, iMessages on Android because they were afraid parents would give their kids were, cheap Android. They were phones. about to release it. Right, right yeah. exactly. They were going to put it out, and, and they, they said, said, "No, this is going to hurt us Craig more Federico than it's going to." Said us. specifically that. So uh, they that was years ago. They didn't want to do this, right. but the uh, EU has convinced them that they have to be interoperable, and this is their yep. solution. Yeah, still be a but green I mean, bubble, though. This is what regulations yeah, are for. Right, is to create standards for competitors to play in. Right, it's it, it's it's frankly what Cory Doctorow has been saying ever since he wrote the world right. famous insurtification yes document. <laughs> Yep. He said the answer to this is interoperability. If you can move your stuff from one to another, as soon as somebody insurtifies their product, you go, okay, mm -hmm. see you later. And you have a yeah, then normal, exit. But that's how normal market forces get to that's impact those companies. Work. It's how it should if work. You, right. It, it, it literally is restoring order, for lack of yes. a better term, to the market. Um, and I don't think yes. there's, so I, I, there's any argument against I mean, Apple's going to say things like, well, security, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. But really, it's just a, a profit motivation. It's not good That's for all consumers. It is. The App Store thing is exactly like that. You know, if we, we can't have people sideload things. What about all the security yeah. that's in the store? Lock-in is not security's good. on the device. The security, the security's not in the store. Right. It, <laughs> the security is in the iOS. You're going to have the same security. It, it's they're, they're the marketing on this stuff is tough. I, I and they'll go kicking and screaming, and then they'll have to do it. They'll be like, "Yeah, it works fine." Yeah. yeah. In the words of the uh, great Cicero, "Cui bono" is is what I always say. <laughs> Who benefits? Yeah. And in this case, not the end user, the company it profits right. from this. So, yeah. it's it's hard being outside of Europe and seeing these changes and not thinking, um, "If this is so great, why are we not doing this here?" You know, why, why isn't this everywhere else? Richard made a good point uh, that it uh, it is easier from a software engineering perspective to just have the one version, if you will, sure. uh, that is the same everywhere. But then again, this is a company that has such a convoluted uh, set of uh, versions of Windows out in the world now. And between all the different parts of the Insider program, and and it's, it's like, I don't even know how they keep, you know, it, I remember the old days, there was always a trunk and there were branches on the build thing, right? And you sort of imagine this future would be a tree. And now it's just like a planet that's just a tree. And there's so many little, little parts, you know. I don't know how anyone keeps track of this stuff. It's so, it's just so big and complicated. Um, so I hope they go back to simple. I hope they do the right thing everywhere, obviously, right? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm excited. At least other options are being explored. It's easier to say, I want this, when it actually yeah. exists. It's not an well, idea. It's interesting to look at what they're doing, right? I think the actual, so again, like this is like talk versus action. So, you know, you could say, uh, you know, we support the DMA or the EU, we're going to do the right thing. You're like, okay, that's good. What does it look like? And then they kind of come out and say what it's going to look like. And you're like, this is what I've been asking for since 2015. What is wrong with you people? Like, this is like, you know, you make me sound like a raving lunatic. And all I ever wanted was this. Yeah. And now you're doing it. I mean, what took so long? By the way, Paul, a great hands-on Windows idea. Do that. Oh, yeah. Show people how to do. Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah. I yeah. would love that. I'm yep. sure you'll do a blog post too. 
Uh, I just did one. I'm ha I'm losing track of when things come out on that show because I, I record them in, you know, batches. But yeah, I did do one uh, that included that um, Windows setup workaround where you could just have a very clean install. And you you go in and you change your region settings. You don't get any of the crap, or Love you it. don't get any oh, of the. I want that. Yeah. Like that's a, those tips are just uh, that's like bread and butter stuff. It's you know, yeah, it's nice. Want that all the cool pilots? So many co pilots. <laughs> what we need is a Windows setup co pilot. Nice. Ah. Yeah. Let's not do that. Oh, we could have Microsoft Mom. What do you think you're doing today? That is well, though, isn't it? Today, we have Microsoft Nanny State. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Um, <laughs> Isn't that how Microsoft right? demonstrates uh, Copilot? You know, uh, make make it dark mode. I know. Uh, this is one of the dumbest. <laughs> and I, yeah. Sorry, so don't get me started. That. That's that's actually the best example of how terrible that feature is. It's not, it's not well done at all. Please. Uh, I can't figure out how to set up dark mode. Could you just turn that on there for me? So wait, you know the name of it, but you can't find it. <laughs> what are you kidding me? Like saying it out loud. You, you know, know that thing where made, all the easy. windows guess, are dark in the background. If man, only I could type in eyes. something and type the name of it and find it. <laughs> yeah, you can. It's called start <laughs> or settings, you know. Hey, man, could you make a Spotify playlist for me, man? I'm too high to do it myself. Yeah, if you type in dark mode and start, it you literally get the links you need to go <laughs> it's to. It's easier exactly. to do that than to get Copilot to do it. You're still typing, you know. I, you know. Yeah. yeah. Plus, we have to. We feel like we have to be polite, you know. So now we're like Copilot, comma. Would you please enable cop or uh, dark mode, you know? And then it does the thing like um, uh, personal assistants do, like uh, Alexa and so forth. It'll say, "Okay, Paul, do you want me to put in dark mode?" Yeah, yeah. That's what I just said. Okay. Putting on dark. Let's stop talking. <laughs> stop. Hey, but talking. if it does it and it sounds like Scarlett you know, Johansson, I, I, know, know, I you could. You would something. get. Listen, anything of too uh, any too much of anything is terrible. Even yeah. Scarlett Johansson. Even Scarlett Sorry. Johansson. You would, you would wow. get tired of her too. I'd like to try anyway. Just you know, it's science later. Yeah, sci for science. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, brother. So remember when Microsoft said Windows 10 was never going to get any new features and everyone applauded and said, I'm going to stay on Windows 10. Well, we were just, just kidding about that. That's uh, hilarious. Since then, Microsoft has added several new features to Windows 10, and uh, they are about to add the biggest one ever, which is Copilot. Nice. Uh, that feature that was uh, so important to Microsoft, they had to rush it out uh, to Windows 11 in a preview state uh, four times, I think, <laughs> right? Uh, to make sure everyone got it. And um, hmm? I'm seeing competition with 23H2 for the most releases. Right. Yep. So this is uh, also science or math, really, right? Um, there are uh, 1.4 billion um, people running Windows. A billion of them are on Windows 10. So putting Copilot on the little thing, uh, you know, it's good long term. It's fine. But uh, if you really want to reach that audience, you got to put it on 10. Ooh, and yeah, uh, this is something, I mean, we, we've been talking about this all summer. I mean, isn't, I mean, it, it costs them a lot of money. Oh, but you have to pay for it. No, you don't. No, you don't. So yeah, are, they, isn't that like burning money to put it on a billion machines? No. So the, the, the co-pilot that is in Windows 10 is, is so you got to remember that the, it's not just rebranding, but the kind of um, product tiers that exist for co-pilot. So the base level is co-pilot. This is the free one. It's ad supported. It's what you get in Bing, which used to be called Bing Chat. That's just called Copilot, Bing, Copilot, and Bing, I guess. Um, it's in uh, the sidebar and edge. It's the basis or the foundational layer of Copilot in Microsoft 365, Copilot in Windows 10 and now 11, 11 or 11 and now 10. Um, I don't remember who brought it up. Sorry, Leo, or whoever was talking about the dark mode thing and how silly that is. Yeah. You got to understand that aside from Copilot, just the base level Copilot, the amount of functionality you get on Windows 10 could be encapsulated with seven of my fingers. I mean, it's like this, it's it's just a bunch of simple setting change. Take a screenshot, change it to dark mode. It's a, it, it's a silly list of nothing. So that doesn't cost them anything. This is just a, a parsing, this is like a Zork, you know, Infocom parsing table to map you to, you know, some feature and just enable it. It's not, it, it really is not, con it's really not AI. Um, and so really Copilot in Windows now is just Copilot. It's just the, it's the free ad supported version. 
Right. Um, so, yeah. Does it cost them money? You know, actually, yeah, it probably does. Right. It probably does, but it's not, uh, it's not causing the power grid to dim in Europe. Every time someone runs a query, it's not, it's not that. It also like, comes down to, do they actually use it? Right. That's yeah. Awesome. Right. That, I do feel like there's a uh, concern. There should be a concern that the quality of this thing is so low that what will happen is people will try it once and be like, what is this stupid and just turn it off and they'll never look again. Right. Because there will be advances. I mean, look, I, I think going to market with Bing this year was a mistake from a branding perspective, but the one thing it's important to remember or know, if you didn't even look at it is that thing got dramatically better over time. Yeah. And um, you can see it visually in the Dolly three, was it Dolly three versus four or whatever the version numbers are. Uh, the quality of the graphics that go into the Bing image creator or Bing creator or whatever that's called now. Um, but it, it's, it's not just that, you know, like I, one of the things I do, you could try this yourself. Um, the very first demo, I think, or the one I remember the most clearly that Yusuf Mehdi did back in February was, um, I'm, he said, I'm going to Mexico city for a, um, a wedding. Give me a five day itinerary. This is the one thing I run this in every AI there is to see what sure. it is. Um, I, I'm very familiar with to Mexico City. To be able to do that, right? Yeah, it's interesting uh, on a number of levels because uh, I still see very common mistakes for Mexico City is the size of Rhode Island. So you get these situations where it says go do the balloons out over here, and then come back to this other <laughs> corner of the city. It's like guys, these are all of a sudden. these are in different time zones. You can't <laughs> do that in one day. Going to like, that's just a yeah. That yeah. Even if uh, there wasn't traffic, and there right. is, if you could fly, you would still be late. Like this is not going to work. Um, so that's a problem, although that's gotten better. Um, but the other one is just, and everyone, well, you guys know this, maybe everyone doesn't know this, but, um, th this answer is being generated on the fly. It's not like there's some definitive answer to that question. Right. Or, and it's, it's actually also not like this thing knows anything about me and says, well, Paul, we know you don't really like museums. So here's a, an itinerary that respects that preference and will give you a personalized itinerary. So every time you run this, it's a little bit different, right? I mean, it's kind of the fun of AI. You get like a an off the uh, cuff kind of Sense response. Of randomness. That's yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting. Um, anyway, uh, Windows Ten guys, sorry. I know you thought you were getting into a safe zone, um, and you're not because you know terrible. That's the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Do you want to then, talk about, uh, uh, well, I don't know, you pick. I see. Yeah, well, so Windows just looking at the here. Windows Insider program. So yeah. one of the little inside baseball bits here is Microsoft originally intended to announce uh, both Copilot on Windows 10 and the DMA changes that were coming in Windows, coincidental to Insider preview releases of those operating systems that would include these changes. And they didn't make it. <laughs> so uh, they still went forward with the announcement. They still said we could write about it. But the stuff that you know you could actually go test it didn't occur until a few days later or whatever it was. So just kind of a, a kind of a random just, you know, just didn't line up. And it was during Ignite. And honestly, I felt I feel like they wanted the DMA and Copilot stuff to kind of get lost in the news. So they were like, look, we're going to market. Who cares? So uh, since then, uh, there have been Windows Insider program or Windows Insider Preview builds that include those things we just talked about right so the dma changes in the case of windows 11 and also the copilot uh, starts rolling out to um to windows 10. so if you're this again confusing because there are a million different versions of windows but there is a there are windows 10 insider <laughs> right builds as well as windows 11 builds. so if you're in the release preview channel which i think we all know is in indicative of the fact that this thing is probably going to be coming out pretty quick um, they have tested it a bunch or to some degree uh, on Windows 11. So maybe they feel like they don't need as much uh, runway for this. But um, the, I don't remember what today it was. It was last week sometime. So it must have been late last. Oh, no, sorry. It was actually yesterday. Oh, they, they took them almost a week. Um, there's now a build in the release preview program of Windows 10 uh, that will get it over time, right? It's a CFR type thing. So not everyone's going to get it immediately. But if you want to see what that light is like and you've been avoiding uh, Windows 11 for some reason, um, there's your chance. Congratulations. And last week, or much earlier in the week, uh, there was a build to the, let me just look this up, uh, also the release preview channel um, with 
some changes to Copilot, which are actually pretty useful because I, I, I wrote about Copilot for the book and I realized a couple of things were wrong with it. And I don't just mean that it's terrible, but rather that sort of from a basic functionality perspective, it was lacking. Um, so they're adding some of that stuff. I'll get to that in a second. And then also the DMA uh, ch compliance changes, right? They, this is coming in pretty hot, uh, but then that's what this year has been like. Mm -hmm. um, if you use Copilot today in Windows 11, you might notice you cannot alt tab to it or Windows key tab, right? Um, you can't, so <laughs> you, you almost have to select it with the mouse to get to it. Now I say almost because you could do Windows case, Windows key C to toggle it. So you could toggle it off, toggle it back on, and then it would be selected and you could start typing, I guess. But I mean, effectively, like you want to be able to reach this in seamless way. So they're going to add Copilot to L tab. That makes sense. Um, for people with multiple displays, they're going to let you move Copilot around. Unlike the taskbar, don't get excited. Sorry, sorry. Um, and it's going to remember where you left it. So if you bring it up next time with the keyboard shortcut or by clicking, no, no, just the keyboard shortcut, it will actually remember the place it was. If you click on the icon in the taskbar, it will open on that display, right? No matter where it was last time. That makes sense. Um, they're going to let people who sign in with a local account use Copilot for 10 queries. Uh, right now, it just doesn't work. 10 queries uh, per day? I think it says 10. <laughs> I think it's 10. We'll see Ever. if that changes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then they're going to prompt you to sign in. 11. I mean, really? Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who knows how they choose these things, but, um, you know, obviously for this thing to work effectively, it ha you have to have some account behind it and then the data that's attached to the account. So they, uh, they want that to happen. That's fine. Um, and then there's a, uh, a change. Most people won't see this in an upgrade scenario, although actually like they're saying some people may see it in that scenario, but, um, they're going to make the default wallpaper, or the background, I guess we're calling it in windows be Windows Spotlight. And Windows Spotlight is that thing that kind of changes it every day and you get a little button, you can learn more about it. Right. Um, okay. I mean, that's okay. Um, if you, this is how it's supposed to work. I can't promise this, but if you selected your own photo, for example, or photo slideshow or whatever, it sh you should never see Windows Spotlight. But if you kept it on the stock background, you know, that light bloom thing, you, you might you might start seeing Windows Spotlight. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Microsoft will mix it up for you. Okay. So that's actually a pretty big build. And just like the Windows 10 one, it's in release preview. And that I'm thinking December in preview, maybe. Close. And right. I mean, it's going to happen quick. So there's that. Um, and then there were Canary and Dev builds as well. I think these were late last week. Dev build, lots of File Explorer fixes, uh, fixes rather. Sorry. Hey, yeah. Needed. And I, 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 I've been beating the drum on this. I uh, still now, I did some of this today. I do this. I did some on the plane. I do this a lot. I've been working with, this kind of photo collection declutter thing I've been doing. And you're basically working in folders of files that have a thousand, 2000, maybe more files. This is where file explorer just chokes to death. Like it's, it, it is, it, you could do something very simple, like um, sort by name, which is the default, but then you do group by file type, or this is type, you know, so you get like a uh, JPEGs, GIFs, yeah. uh, MP4s, whatever. You can go make a sandwich, use the bathroom, uh, check the mail. Uh, that thing will, it will come back. It does. It always comes back. You. It is unbelievable how long that takes. Well, uh, it would be quicker to print the files out and sort them on the floor by yourself. Yes. Like it, it's, it makes no That's sense how problem. terrible this is. Uh, somebody didn't I, test. I, I don't know. They were so busy working on the win UI thing. They kind of lost the script on what is important. I think with file explorer. Yeah, like I said. Uh, and then I don't know if any of these are super important. Um, you, you know, because Teams is taking everything over, you can show those contacts instead of your Windows contacts in the share window that nobody uses except for me. I use it all the time, actually. Um, and there's a disable phone That's link. Right. Teams contacts are terrible. Yeah. Like, well, you look at a big company like external contacts in Teams will make you sad. In the list of 1177 digital decluttering tasks I have in front of me, one yeah. of them is contacts, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I have all these little problems that I, I, I guess, big or little, I don't know, when I switch between phone platforms. It's worse when you go away from Apple because of the iMessage stuff. It's awful. But skipping over that, one of the weird things I experience is I use the same Google account for all my contacts. But when I switch phones, my neighbors are all phone numbers and not names anymore. 
and I try, I've, I've tried to switch. I, I've done it on each phone. I've done it on the web. I've done, I, I don't know why, um, but I have, I have fake contacts that have somehow merged their way into my main contact. So I have uh, humorous contact names I use for the book, like Al Cantera is a guy in my contacts, you know, stuff like that. Like I, I'm that stupid. Now that's showing and, up in your, in your, yeah. And I literally, we were at, we were at a restaurant the other night and I talked to my wife. She's like, call whoever it was, call your brother-in-law or something. And I brought up my phone and she goes, who's Al Cantera? And I'm like, I'm just, I, I'm stupid. I don't know. Uh, he's, he's nobody. I have, I have pretend friends. Uh, that's, that's how your husband is. It's weird. Do you still feel like Canary is Windows 12? It just seems we less. Are, we are closing in on the one year anniversary of when I made that prediction. And uh, I don't, I can't say I feel good about it. Um, but it, I, yeah, I, but I do, know right? You know it's got to be somewhere. There's a V next somewhere. That's right. The That's thing that, look, this should bother, not everyone listening or watching this is an engineer necessarily, but I think we all, we're all in that spectrum, right? We all have this sense of order and it should bother everybody that there isn't a logical stepping through the, through the various channels in the insider program that the most, because they describe it that way, mm -hmm. the most far out features are going to end up in Canary first, unless they don't, because we yeah. can all point to multiple examples where they don't, yeah. you know, exactly. yeah, just didn't happen. So there, there doesn't seem to be any sense of sequence to it at all. I want to have, uh, uh, you know, we, it's we just talked team. about this. Yeah, we no, just no, said no, it's, it's different team. There's a template for what they should be doing, and it's different. Oh, it's this yeah. is a lack of parental oversight. I, mm -hmm. I, what? Look, I, generally speaking, I think it's f still safe to say that if something is in release preview, it Probably. will be out soon. Pick your <laughs> time frame of what soon means, yeah. but it is coming, right? I think it's pretty safe. Might have but man a, uh, have a rough trip, but it'll be coming. Yep, yeah, and it will be released four times in pre. Look, we don't know. God knows. They spin the wheel. It could be anything, but. This other stuff, you know, when you go from Canary to Dev to Beta, this should be very yeah. logical. Should and be able to follow. Should follow a little cadence or whatever, and it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. So. I mean, there's also stuff that goes off the rails, like it makes it into the the Beta, and then it's like, oh, this really has problems. We're going to just take it away for a while, and it'll go back through the early. Oh yeah. Uh, listen, <laughs> we didn't mention the fact that beta uh, is an AB testing scenario as well. Yeah. Uh, and they've changed the way they do it, but it's still the same thing, right? I mean, it, it, it is so much complexity and I would call it needless complexity. Look, the leadership of ins the insiders changed. The new people not only don't know where the steering wheel is, they don't even know if they like the car. <laughs> right. There's Actually, one of them is listening and said, wait, there's a steering wheel. Yeah. No. I, I, you know, yeah, it's, it's bizarre. I, I just Microsoft or better or worse is not good about passing programs along to new leadership. It's not a thing that goes well. Yeah. Right. Sometimes it makes sense. And sometimes it doesn't, if it's bound to revenue and things, that's fine. Windows Insiders is a perfect example of something that is unlikely to progress well. So that they just yeah. make a new one and start over. Do they rehab it? And so you see all this twitching that goes on as they <laughs> that knob do right. And you get a phone call. Don't touch that knob again. Right. Like it was a, that's what it was a time period, you know, when, uh, when they announced the windows inside a program, which was at the windows 10 announcement in San Francisco, mm -hmm. the last day of September, whatever it was, 2014. Yeah. Um, they, you know, Gabe all was in charge. He had been at Microsoft for a decade and a half, two decades, but it was, um, engineer, right. Um, there was this sense that we were getting a, a look into the internals of how Microsoft builds the product. Um, I have my own kind of NT based understanding of the build lab and how, you know, this important, this process is and everything. And now it just feels like kind of a, like a, like a frat kegger party or something. It's like that nobody has any, like they're just spilling beer on everything. And yeah, there wasn't a lot of guidelines around who should be insiders and who shouldn't like there was a reason it got wildly out of control, but then like I said, all the leaders turned over and the new folks yeah. look at it and it's like, well, what, what does this do? Why do I want this? Like it, and yeah, it I wish I uh, look, I, there's things I don't know. I mean, I'm not at Microsoft. It's very likely that they were not getting the level of engagement that they expected and wanted that they weren't getting the, the type of feedback they wanted. Right. So they started doing what Google did with search results. They put their hand on the scale and they started, you know, changing things. So it went from a purely organic engineering driven 
entity or whatever uh, to something that was marketing. There was a period of time with Donna Sarkar where they used to talk about like the yeah. 7, 11, 17, whatever it was the number of people that were in there. Uh, that became a big thing for a little while. They don't talk about that at all anymore. And uh, now it's the kind of um, Stephen Sanofsky slash uh, Panos Panay lip service. It's like, oh, this is feedback so important. Uh, here's some crap no one ever asked for, you know. And it's it it it, it just I think it that and the fact that they aren't doing this logically uh, and you know people signed up to be in specific parts of it and aren't getting that thing that they th they were promised. I think just furthered the lack of engagement and led to disappointment and. And then that's my guess. I'm, I'm on the outside. Part of that leads to a path that says, well, this isn't working. Let's shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. And when, in fact, uh, the decisions you guys made on the inside is what led what to made this, it not you know, work. potentially. Yeah. What happens? Okay. Yep. Okay. One more, one more windows uh, thing. This is uh, not great news, but it's also a little esoteric, but uh, micro prompted by Microsoft, by the way, um, there are fingerprint sensors that uh, ship in Dell, Lenovo, and Surface devices, Microsoft devices, that have uh, security vulnerabilities. Um, and these it's are used in Windows. a hello thing. This is just fingerprint. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, this is interesting to me because, you know, I talk to PC makers all the time. You know, one of the things I've witnessed is the um, kind of advancement of this hardware right so you know lenovo for example talks about this i think they call it a match on sensor you know the, in the early days the fingerprint reader was connected to the system now it's like this uh you know physically isolated thing that's all by itself like see that whatever the you know whatever happens in the secure chipset whatever it's called it's in this stays in there right it's it's completely isolated from the rest of the system as it should be uh, and yet as it should be exactly and yet they're one of the companies that's in here so um, I guess these things are, uh, in some cases, um, out in the open and so forth. So I guess the question here is, uh, like what could happen and what data would they actually get? I mean, are they getting like a fingerprint <laughs> or something like it's what's a hash, the... right? I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, so I get having a second stage authentication. Right? Yep. Yep. Potentially. So we'll see what they do actually to fix it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the upside of this is a bunch of of um good guys did a red hat thing it's like well let's see how vulnerable yeah. it is and found the vulnerability not that yep. they found a zero day that's out in the wild it's like oh hey this could be exploited we should clean this up right 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 oh also, actually i should say you should go this way yeah so we will see yeah uh by the way i recommend hp pcs i'm just throwing out there i uh <laughs> not on the list um <clears throat> Also, uh, facial recognition works, I guess, if you mm, wanted yeah. to use that. I, I actually Hello. prefer the finger, but. Hello is a lot of different things, right? You, you, you pins, yep. is, uh, different. And it's becoming things. more in a way. It's not not exactly, not in the th a sense that there's more authentication methods, but now in Windows 11 version 23H2, we have this formal notion of presence sensing, right? Um, and this is something that uh, PC makers would implement themselves in their own software, but now it's part of Windows. And this, those sensors are probably typically right up by the, the webcam, but they sense when you come and go, you or anyone else, I guess, and uh, they can wake up the machine making uh, facial recognition that much quicker, right? And then they also uh, log you out and put the machine to sleep in a few minutes uh, when you walk away. Yeah. And, and like so a this, fingerprint reader, you need specialty hardware for, for the facial yeah. recognition. Support. Yes, you do. It's around. So. It's in a lot of computers, it's an upgrade. It's kind of interesting, like the um, a lot of HPs, actually, uh, you can get like a webcam, whatever it is. But you yeah. can also get the IR version of the webcam, and which often ships with now on premium PCs with that uh, uh, sensor, uh, the um, presence sensor as well. Yeah. And that gives you the hello effects. Gives you, yeah, the whole, that's the full meal deal, I guess. Yeah. I've always wanted so we'll to see. see if I can figure it. So if he sees a second face, it clocks the machine. So it's like nobody can look over. Yeah, you. right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that'd be an interesting. Someone's down. looking over your shoulder. <laughs> it just shuts down. Exactly. Yeah. Well, actually, that's another level of security you can have. They have. Uh, they used to be covers on screens, but now it's built into the screen, where it it basically blurs it or darkens it if you were even like a couple of degrees off. If you're off axis. Um, yeah. If you're not looking right at it, it looks like garbage, right? So your seatmate isn't like. Doo, doo, doo. Speaking of which, did I tell you this story? No. Uh, when I when I flew to um, uh, Seattle uh, from Chicago on the big plane. I was in an exit row, three seats, right? 
and there's a couple next to me and the guy, they were about our age and uh, the guy put on a mask, fell asleep, he slept the whole flight. It was fantastic. I couldn't believe it. So I'm working on my laptop, Lenovo, by the way. And <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a nosy person, but you know, when, you know, kind of you stretch your neck, whatever. I looked at the woman next to me and she's on her phone facing her husband. So her, I can see her screen because she has tilted herself right. and what she, she's typing, she's Googling and says, how to tell when your husband is having an emotional affair. Oh dear. And I was like, yikes. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I was Wait. like, okay, enough of that. <laughs> like, okay. Yep. <laughs> it was okay from. Yeah. From, wow. I, Maybe don't Google that period. on an airplane. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, uh, as needs may, I don't know. That's bizarre. Yep. I, sure. This is why I, I mean, I don't usually look at people or stuff like that. I just, I mean, exactly. oof. Oof. and now I'll never oof. do it again. Oof. I don't want to learn stuff. You've about learned people. now. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let me take a little break and then, uh, and then you can do more. Yeah. Crap. Oh, sure. uh, maybe you do some earnings learnings. How about that? Not just Microsoft, okay. but others. We have learnings from others. Yeah. There well, these are all, um, uh, you know, part of the ecosystem. I Microsoft guess. adjacent. They Shall are. we say? I <clears throat> Our uh, show today brought to you by, and I mean quite literally, Cashfly, because Cashfly's our CDN, our content delivery network. So when you listen or watch one of our shows, you're getting it from a Cashfly server. For over 20 years, Cashfly has held the track record for high performing, ultra reliable content delivery, serving over 5,000 companies, including ours, in over 80 countries. Organizations consistently choose Cashfly for, I think, three things. Well, I'm going to throw in a fourth, but scalability is important. Reliability is important. Unrivaled performance is important. And I think price is important. And I'm going to throw that one in too. Cashfly's revolutionary storage optimization system ensures your holiday season remains jolly. How does it do that? I know because we've been using it for some years now, <clears throat> kind of unofficially at first. Now they've made it available to all their customers. Uh, storage optimization system creates private partitions dedicated entirely to your use, providing 100% bandwidth to ensure your content remains king. Keep your content, your data primed, <clears throat> closer to customers, maintaining optimal speeds, and ensuring quicker content delivery no matter where your customers are. And by the way, 100% cash hits. No misses. And we love that. Why would you would say, well, why would a podcast need that? Well, because we don't want our customers to see hesitation, stalls in downloading, or can't find the file. <clears throat> Cashfly really helps us be ultra reliable and ultra uh, available. Like Cashfly, they can do many things. For instance, if you have a website like Cashfly, supercharge your images, watch your web content soar to new heights of efficiency and performance, jump on board with Cashfly's smart image optimization service, which gives your audience the seamless, lag-free experience they deserve on any screen. The reason you want to put your content at the edge, you know, we have a centralized server. We did at first, and people hit it, and it was very expensive, and it was very unreliable. By putting your content out there on the edge on Cashfly servers all over the world, Cashfly ensures your delivery speed is as quick as instantaneous as possible, as close to instantaneous as possible. Add Cashfly's video on demand cache layer to your mix. Whoo, now you got some. Witness a transformative reduction in loading times. No more buffering. Say goodbye to the buffering blues. Immediately and permanently drive your cache hit ratio to 100% using Cashfly's video on demand cache. With Cashfly, you get ultra low latency video streaming that can deliver video to over a million concurrent users. You get lightning fast gaming, which downloads faster, zero lag, glitches, no outages. You get mobile content optimization, so your site loads faster on any size screen. It's the only CDN built for throughput. You can deliver rich media content up to 10 times faster than traditional delivery methods, up to 30% faster than other major CDNs. It's fast. Flexible month-to-month -month billing. We like that because, you know, we have very peaky, I bet you do too, very peaky demand. When Windows Weekly comes out, everybody downloads it, and then over the rest of the week, it kind of tails off. And then 
next Wednesday, brrr, again, right? So Cashfly gives you and gave us flexible month-to-month -month billing until you kind of learn those demand cycles. And then once you figure it all out, you can get fixed terms and get big discounts. The point is you design your own contract when you switch to Cashfly. And by the way, highly recommend Cashfly's elite managed packages because you get VIP treatment. Your dedicated account manager is with you from day one, making sure you get a smooth implementation. And they're there then the rest of the time, 24-7, for support whenever you need it. We, we never need it because it just works. But it's good to know it's there. We've been using Cashfly for more than 10 years now. It was a lifesaver. We wouldn't have it any other way. Other CDN networks come to us all the time saying, we can give you a deal, we can do it. No, sorry, we're happy. We love Cashfly. Jumpstart your journey with Cashfly. Get a complimentary first month or give it a whirl with a free five terabyte account. Simply go to cashfly.com slash twit. CA, you've heard me say it so many times. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com slash twit. We, uh, we deliver petabytes of data every month via Cashfly, and I can, I can vouch for it. It really works. Thank you, Cashfly. Now back to Windows Weekly. And the latest in, uh, what, did I, what did I say we were going to do? Earnings learnings. <laughs> Earnings learnings. Um, if you go back in time to August, um, NVIDIA reported that its revenues year over year had doubled. And I explained at the time, y you don't see that. <laughs> that's not something that happens. For right? a multi-billion dollar company. That's yeah, no, it's just, you know, it's impossible. Well, guess what? Uh, this quarter, their earnings tripled. So uh, I guess all the bets are off. I, it's, everything's different. Um, see, their pipeline, that's incredible. How do you move that much hardware? Like, how did they I know, it's, it's they unbelievable. Move? Yep. Wow. Um they were talking about the next quarter, the current quarter. And one of the things they were saying, it was because of the, uh, the new uh, U S export restrictions um, to China and some countries in the middle East, uh, mm -hmm. they were going to have a negative impact on their earnings and uh, their earnings are going to jump by 230%, which is more than triple. So they're going to be okay, guys. Everything's fine. Oh, they're going to get by. <laughs> they're doing great. Um, they would be even better if they could sell to China, uh, mm -hmm. but they're not. So, yeah. And it's all um, machine learning, the workload. Yep. This is not 100% mentioning gaming. This is well, not 100%. It's like 90%. <laughs> so, <laughs> some, you know, so yeah. their revenues were uh, 18.1 billion, 14.51 14 of that came from their data center group. Which wow. is what you're talking about. Yep. So, yep. so they're basically selling to three customers. Yeah. And then uh, there's a couple of guys uh, in the middle of the country that are buying uh, graphics cards for computers. I guess th that business is going okay. Um, the thing, so whatever. Somebody? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so that used to be their business. Now it's like a little tiny part of the business. Um, and then uh, semi-related to Microsoft, by the way, of course, we talked about um, the CEO, Jensen Huang, was up on stage during Ignite. Right. Um, there was an announcement there about uh, an AI foundry service that NVIDIA has running on Azure. Uh, first, it will be on other clouds as well. Um, but uh, I don't know where this was announced or if it was announced, but GeForce Now, which is their game streaming service, this is the one where you have a, a lot, actually multiple libraries possibly of games on PC and you can stream them to devices right over the cloud or, or whatever, the ether. Um, thanks to um, the Microsoft stuff coming online, uh, Game Pass, uh, the first party game, Starfield, et cetera. Um, that service now is all, over 1700 titles, by the way. Wow. That's not, that's not too bad. Um, including new ones, you know, Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk is not that new, actually. Uh, Forza Motorsport and Starfield, which just came out. Cyberpunk so. DLC, right? It's the expansion. Oh, Phantom. Uh, sorry, you're right. Uh, Phantom Livery. Yep. Forgot that part of it. <laughs> so uh, that's that. Okay. So they're doing great. Um, Zoom, interesting. Another uh, company that really benefited greatly from the pandemic has slowed down dramatically. Uh, they're experiencing low, low single digit growth now. Um, and they're turning to business customers to kind of make up the slack, <laughs> pardon the pun, uh, for their consumer uh, customers who are not doing so great. And of course, they're turning to AI, right? So um, hey, I've also seen, just because I'm still a subscriber, some some of my guests don't want to use Teams. Shocking, I know. Yeah. Uh, they really trying to be a platform. They've got all widgets and things for apps. Like they're just yeah, trying to be more important. You know what I really liked about Zoom? It, it was light and did the thing. Yeah. yeah. 
video calls. That's what it was there for. It was good at yeah. that. This yeah. is this is what happens. You know, you want a bigger slice of the pie. Um, it's only a matter of time before they have an office suite. You know, be, all that stuff's going to happen. It's stupid. A lot it's of too work. bad. Yeah. Well, so their uh, their big AI feature, by the way, uh, what is the name? It's called Zoom AI Companion, and one of the things it does will be very familiar uh, to anyone who uses Teams or any of the Microsoft stuff. Uh, it does uh, meeting summaries, right? Of course it does. Well, so. and then and at least that's still in the primary job role of are you yes. calls like okay, yeah, summaries, transcript, summary, all of that is yep. good. Nice. It's the yeah other stuff that can get. I uh, this is sort of. Apropos of nothing, I guess, but every time I move to new PCs all the time. So like yeah. Zoom is one of the several applications I install. And right uh, last three times or so I've done it, it said, hey, uh, we could integrate into your uh, calendar. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Actually, that would be useful. I'll, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, it never works. <laughs> you know, so I use Google for that. Sign into Google. It's like, okay, sign into Google. Okay, sign into Google. Then I said, oh, forget it. And that's the end of that. So, yeah, yeah I mean, uh, for me, uh, a Zoom call is always tied to my schedule, right? It's not a, for me, it's never a, something that happens on the fly. It's like we're scheduled in advance, like the show. We show up at the appropriate time. It, it starts, you know, it'd be kind of cool if it was built in, but you'll figure it out. <clears throat> Maybe. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the top two PC makers in the world, uh, HP and Lenovo. And Lenovo's number one. Both uh, reported their earnings. Uh, neither one of them is doing great. Uh, HP's earnings were for both the quarter and their fiscal year. I'll the just look at the year. You like that machine? That's your favorite machine? What's that? Well, that's the, no, HP is the one who doesn't use the same uh, OEM for the fingerprint reader. So that's why we like it. That's right. They were not involved in that list right. of problems. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, not. I, they you know. they only tested this, those those three or four. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's Microsoft and it was my ironically it was Microsoft that asked uh Darkwing yeah, that's right. to test yeah, it yeah. and the, the surface was interesting one of the right failing devices yeah yeah there's a guy on uh Twitter <clears throat> master and he was like he goes how come I never hear about anything like this happening with uh touch ID on the you know the Apple device I'm like I've never heard about anything this happening with this with Windows alone what are you talking about yeah Let's, I, I hope Apple would do the same thing and uh and test yeah. their own or get somebody a third party it, to test it. that problem right yeah so it was a Dell and Lenovo and a Surface, and but Surface, yeah. Right. But I think those are just the three they tested. I think you can probably presume okay, maybe that. Okay, that there are many, that. many more who might well be vulnerable as well. Well, uh, aside from the security problems, the PC market is still the dumpster. But um, <laughs> you know, still for the fiscal year, hang, which is uh, got a pandemic the, the, hangover, right? Yeah. We're looking at uh, 2024 for the the rebound, you know, and then we'll look at 2025, I guess. Uh, Lenovo saw revenue declines year over year, 14.6% for the Yikes. entire year, which Yikes. is not great. Yeah. Uh, but they have good cash flow. Uh, they're doing a lot of um, research and development on AI stuff. They're talking now they're talking about AI PCs are going to rescue the day uh, next year. That's what Lenovo is saying, too, by the way. They have a slightly different name for it, but we will see. Um, I was looking over there, you know, they all provide numbers and charts and data and stuff. And, uh, HP actually maps very closely to my understanding of what, what Windows is like internally at Microsoft or what the, their business segments are, which is meaning uh, two thirds or more of their business is to commercial customers and less than that, uh, less than a third of it is to consumers. Right. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, Lenovo, similar problem. They are the biggest uh, PC maker. They've had five straight quarters of sale uh, revenue declines, um, but now they've, they've been doing a, this the second quarter in a row. Clear signs of recovery. At least they claim, um, but they, their Any revenues, yeah, not this day though, because their revenues were down 16% in the quarter, uh, just like HP, right? Um, and th they're part of the business that makes PCs, uh, was actually profitable, um, good, pro good operating margins, right? But declined, <laughs> right? Because that's what happens. And they're yeah. talking about AI PCs. That quarter, right? the quarter or year over year? That's your, everything's year over year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. If, if I say it. It's always your your. Yeah, but it yeah. just speaks to me that this is more pandemic consequence. Yep, yep, yeah. I mean, what you're looking for is kind of a slowing of the decline, I guess. But um, uh, Lenovo has been very explicit about they can see it. They can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully, it's not a Nacella train, but they're going to be whatever. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, HP is supposed to have uh, AI PCs in the second half of the year. Lenovo has not said. Um, but they're going to be doing AI. It's not, they don't just make PCs, of course, but uh, they also make phones through Motorola, right? And tablets and 
blah blah blah. H- you have to wonder AI. if the if the you know the AI PC is just you know got a big old Nvidia chipset in it. Yeah. Right. Put a forty right. sixty in it, you know, like the Surface Studio Two, and call it good. Yeah. Right. I mean, to me, right. To me, the first step is just put the MPU in there and then I don't know yeah. these uh, Lenovo in particular, but HP two um, are very experimental. This is something that you don't really get a lot of credit for. It's also interesting because they're the two biggest companies in the space. Right, they, uh, they come up with a lot of wacky designs. You know, they always have. I mean, for years and years, they've been doing this. Yeah, but I, um, and I like that because that was really that was Apple's shtick was to make a new looking machine that everybody had to copy. So I think they, they, they <laughs> really allow so. designers to do stuff, to try and experiment. Like they, they, they yeah. were screaming into the ultra book. Like it, it took a while, but now they're on the other side of that. Yep. And all of those, yep. That yoga nine by Lenovo. That's an unusual machine. It's crazy pants is what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm using, I'm testing that. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's a ThinkPad T 14 S, which is kind of middle of the road in the ThinkPad lineup, but it's very familiar. You know, it's nice. It's but, but it's not, it's not radical. It's, you know, it's a, it's what a business would want. It's nice. You know, it's, and you, you know, Black Friday is upon us. I got to buy some machines. Like, yeah. The this time. is the time. Even yep. that Surface Studio 2 is absurdly priced that it is. It's like a good yep. 10, 15% off. So the boss was poking me. It's like, what are we going to buy? What are we buying? And she's right. the CAD operator. So she needs all the GPU in the world. Yep. Uh, I have very little excuse. I have no useful skills. So, yeah. yeah. You've been on the same machine for a while. I'm, that's too long. impressive. Yeah, too, too long. It's it's frail. Is so, it eighth gen Intel? Is that what's in that? It's a book two. So I think it might yeah, be. Yeah, I think it might be eighth. I could be wow. wrong. But I think the first one was seventh and then the second one was eighth. I think. You might want to. Yeah, you're, uh, you're right on the edge of not being compatible with Windows 11. <laughs> just, just saying. You it's the one wanna, running Windows 11. You wanna, yeah. might want to check out Leo's garage sale coming up in that conference that's right. room. Hey, how fast can you get to Petaluma? Down down the the yeah. Sounds like it's going to be a bloodbath. Uh, yeah, that's actually what I said. There will be blood. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> laptops xbox one xbox 360 uh all, <laughs> xbox there's a drobo in there my god look at when, all the stuff i don't need having hung around with microsoft as long as i have is any more xbox than I yeah much yeah, xbox. yeah right yeah right. i asked the kid who has a playstation 5 i said you want to give up that uh, xbox 360 he said yeah i said how about the playstation 3 he said no <laughs> interesting <laughs> i'm keeping it wow <laughs> I said okay that's the same era yeah, I know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it was a PlayStation 4. But still, yeah, okay. if you've got a 5... I wouldn't. What do you need the 4 I wouldn't for? play a PlayStation 4 with your games. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, it's so out of date. It's Maybe it might be nostalgia. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, it might be something. If you're going to play those old games, maybe it's a better experience with the direct hardware. Yeah, exactly. Hey, okay. I'm not uh, here to judge, man. <laughs> I am. Uh, no, that's okay. pretty much what I made a career out of. Um, <laughs> so qualified or not. Mr. Hot Take here. Let's <laughs> exactly. uh, let's see. Uh, Apple, you want to do the DMA? Uh, yeah, this DMA is not even worth really. Yeah, I mean, we, we knew this would this. happen. Yeah. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, yeah. We'll see what happens there. It's very interesting stuff. I mean, I like uh, this came up we last should, week. We should Microsoft. tell people what we're talking about. Apple, ByteDance, yes, and Meta contest their gatekeeper designations. Right. For, so yeah. there are companies that are gatekeepers, and then there are products and services that are gatekeepers. You have to have, platforms. what, 50% market share? Is that, or 50 million it's, customers? There's a whole matrix of requirements. It yeah. has to do with revenue. This is by, by Dance, which makes TikTok, if you didn't know that is their complaint is we don't make that much money. <laughs> like you're oh, the thing you're complaining about. We, we're we, we just, we're, well, no, don't, no, they didn't say that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that was uh, their argument is like our service doesn't make the, the, the money bar that you have, whatever it is. Uh, so we'll see. I think there'll be some shifting here, but I, I think there needs to be a, a waiting on this, which is based on the dominance of the company, right? So if something like, like a lot of people have said, well, iMessage is not dominant in Europe. And that, um, this is assuming that's true. I have no idea. But if Apple is in various ways, then to me, you kind of latch on to that. Like it's you, be, because it is coming from Apple, this is, that's like saying, well, Internet Explorer doesn't have uh, even 10% market share, right? It just came out. You're bundling it in Windows. Like the, the problem isn't that no one's using it. It's that everyone will be using it. And all the competition will disappear, right? right. Uh, to me, that's the bar, not the actual usage of the product. But you know, just a lonely last judge, act, which is always challenging. Yeah. Well, the it will sort it out there quick. Yep. All right. Hey. Um, 
Oh God, I already gave away half of this thing. But over the weekend, uh, <laughs> Xbox time. Yep. <laughs> uh, something really big happened. Yes. And I'm not talking about Sam Altman and oh, open something AI. bigger than that. Yep. Uh, half Life, the original Half Life from 1998, turned 25. I cannot right? believe it's been 25 years. That so there are games. My mind. I know there are games in my life that are just replayable. I've replayed them a million times. Yeah. Doom is like this. Quake is like this. Half Life and Half Life Two. My God, these yep. games are amazing. So, when they were released, it was like they came from the future. Yep. Um, Half Life, the, what Valve, and then I <laughs> get a real love hate 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 thing going on with Valve. But Valve stopped working on Half Life two thirds of the way through the sequel to Half Life Two. Like, guys, seriously, market change and. They did a couple of things that I like, like Portal and Portal 2, but they did that, uh, not Left for Dead, or maybe it was called Left for Dead. They did a bunch of other games, whatever, I don't really care for, and just ignored their best game franchise ever. And they've ignored it, except for Alex, the game that came out of VR recently. It's an experimentation in, in AR. In yeah, they basically ignored this world for 20 years. And and guys, seriously, what are you doing? Like, it's it, it, it kills me. But anyway, out of nowhere, Valve showed up and said, hey, we just remember we made this game. <laughs> it's weird. And they uh, released a 25th anniversary update for it. It was free over the weekend. It's now 99 cents, but uh, you can get the original version of Half-Life. They've actually put the graphics back, the loading screens, the mute, everything from the original. The only diff, well, no, not the only difference. I'm sorry, there's a lot of differences, but it works well now on the widescreen displays. They're very common today, so they've expanded the field of view. You can turn everything off. You can, you can make it 100% original, uh, it literally to the tune of like the pixelated graphics. And uh, it's it's classic. Slow, but um, yeah, oh, it's <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> this they, game they, is fantastic. They got, the, they got the face suckers, right? I mean, that's the main. Yeah, thing. yeah, the face suckers. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. The head face suckers, or is that is that uh, alien? Face suckers is correct. They're on. Your, I don't know what you right. call them. I, uh, I don't they know. They hop around, and yeah, this yeah. game it's great, and and they were great. Um, not really add-ons, but like side games, like Opposing Force and Blue, yeah, Blue, Blue, Blue Force. Shift, I think. Well, this and is where Counter-Strike came out of, right? Counter-Strike came out of this. That was the multiplayer thing. And so this stuff is all on sale. Uh, you can still get all this stuff. All the Half-Life games are, are, are crazy sale prices. Um, there's a documentary you can watch on YouTube for free. It's a, about an hour long. It, they brought back the original teammates to talk about their experiences developing the game. I'm surprised none of them crapped on Valve for never doing anything with it. But okay, it's fine. I'm just my mind. They all made a huge pile of money. By the way, ex Microsoft guys uh, formed this company, and a big part of their success is they went down to uh, Mesquite, Texas, and talked to ID Software, and about uh, they, they, some of them had never made games before, and they were like, "We want to get in this market," and they gave them the Quake engine, so they go for it. They just gave it to them. They were like, "Do it," you know. Didn't charge them for it, and uh, you know, and the legend is they're still around today. So uh, that was my weekend. Um, and I got to tell you, I God, the opening sequence of this, which is something you could not do today mm. because it, it it set up like a movie that was made before two, the, the 2000s, meaning there's an opening credit sequence that you have to kind of sit through. But you do sit through it because it's interactive. And as you get down into the facility, it goes down underground. If you, you can look around and you can move around and look over the edges and stuff. And what you see is this increasingly distressing series of incidents where first it's a, a scientist who's locked outside of a door and he's like, like, why can't I? And then they're talking about safety and all the radioactivity is spilling into the ground. And you see like a, mo like a half a month, you see the bad guy, you see the, 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 the man in black or whatever he's called, the uh, bad guy from the end who gives a speech at the guy. end. He's um, a shepherd. Guy in a suit, you know. Anyway. This game is classic. Yeah, go get it. I just go get it. Good. That moment um, in Half Life Two, when you go, you go through the initial inside. Yes, piece, same and thing. Then you walk outside. So Half Life Two is actually the better game. I know that's controversial. Yeah. Like Empire uh, and, better. Yeah, and and there's a lot of reasons for it. It looks better, of course. It does this later. That game still looks fresh today. That blows my mind. That Half Life Two looks modern now. That story, how that has not been made into a movie slash TV series, I, I will never understand. It's perfect. That's a good one. Um, but the reason it's better is it holds its quality all the way through. The The original Half-Life, that last uh, sequence where you go to Zen, the, the alien world, yep. is a little half-baked. Um, you kind of leave behind all the fun stuff from the beginning where you had Barney and uh, the doctors and the interaction with those guys. Um, it's it's, it's like they ran out of budget they needed to finish. 
Yeah, it, it was t a total time crunch. It's still very, very good. But I mean, the, the opening of that game in particular, and then those two side games that take place in that same time frame, uh, the yeah. opposing force and blue shift. Oh, my God. Excellent. Again, that, that was just a game company that when they're making those, by the time they're making yeah. Half-Life 2, they're Valve. Yeah, I know. They, they don't know. need the money anymore. They pick projects based on their merit. Nailed it. Nailed that it. That was the thing. They were just Valve. nailed it. You know, half the, after that, they did the episodes, uh, Half-Life 2, Episode 1 and 2. And that was sort of the three? thing. Maybe there were three. Why it was so well-shaped was that they had a story that was vast, and they knew they were going to tell it over multiple games. And yes. so, you know, they were able to decide what features they were going to go in and what features weren't by each stage. But, of course, three. And it, it, it felt like a fleshed-out world, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, God, I just love it. I love the, the whole it's dystopian really thing is so well done in that game. That, that company is still privately held. There's a couple of billionaires in it, Gabe Newell being one of them. I have Gabe friends Newell, yeah. who work there and are slowly, they have a private stock offering. So everybody got mm -hmm. shares and they nice. sell off a certain number of shares and the company buys them back um, whenever they want to sell. Mm -hmm. and like a, a bunch of people that, many of the people that worked at Valve for a period of time, they'll never work again. They don't need to. Yeah, I don't think they've, a lot of them haven't worked since uh, 2002, 2003. But I, yeah, I see what you're saying. <laughs> um, the problems you have when you have the leadership yeah. that have gone all the way through is that there's just not an incentive to take many risks. The thing that bugs me about that is I've often thought to myself, like if I came into money, right, mm -hmm. somebody handed me millions of dollars, I would pull all the ads off my site, I'd make premium for, for everybody, and I would just keep doing it. And right. I, by the way, I could be wrong. Maybe I just think I would do that. But it bugs me when I see people come into money and then not do that kind of thing. Like I, to me, this gives you the freedom to make the games that you've always imagined. I mean, George Lucas did this. It's controversial, but you know, he, he good, you know, yeah. that's the problem. Well, okay. You know, uh, but need the conflict, right? You don't yeah. make a deal without some heat. Right. So, you know, those, that's part of the equation without Loris cast. you don't get good star Wars. <laughs> As uh, Steve jobs says at the, well, Paraphrasing the whole earth catalog, stay hungry, stay foolish. Right now. And that's hard to do when you're a billionaire, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is. I would imagine. Even so. a, you become even careful, you know? Uh, you're suddenly worth something. Um, yeah. That's too bad. I'm with you, Paul. Well, um, I, you know, if... It, God, that's fact, my feel. I, really I mean, maybe wish, I really wish I had Jeff Bezos money. But even well, I don't Jeff even want Bezos that much money. I, I want a tiny... Per, I, one he, one thousandth of it. Look, I, what did he do just to be comfortable post? not to worry about... You know, I know. Here's, I, I mean, look, we hire the United all these States, people. There, there's and, a, yeah. there's a level of, um, confidence is not the right word, but, uh, just like you, you know, you're going to be okay. Like if you lived in Europe or maybe even Canada where the health system actually is worth a damn and like just having that kind of safety net or, um, I, I don't want anything special. I, I'm just saying like, if I just had the, if there were no questions, about the future. I feel like I, I mean, maybe I'm lying to myself, but I feel like I would just keep doing what I'm doing. I just remind you, you, you folks are down there are remarkably good at fixing things when you choose to, it's not a hard thing to fix. Just fix it. No, I, it's distressing is what it is, but yeah, you're right. I, we'll see. Anyway, it's not going to happen in my lifetime, I bet, or at least not in time to benefit me, but we'll see. Um, a couple of quick game uh, streaming services. I mentioned GeForce Now, uh, their 1700 games were based on uh, adding games from the Microsoft Store, PC Game Pass, and Ubisoft Plus integration. So over 17, like I said, I already talked about that. And then Amazon Luna, which I was worried last week might be going away, is actually expanding to new markets in Europe, including France, Italy, and Spain. So that's good. Because last week when they did the layoffs in the gaming division, this was prime gaming. But, you know, I, it's hard to understand how these things overlap or don't. I was like, oh, my God. Is Luna the reorg. Right? So which that's streaming... Clear network gaming is best see i haven't tested these things enough recently to say i i mean i to me honestly back in the day honestly stadia was kind of the best and i say that from a lag latency perspective with the controller right sure um uh, luna does the same thing if you use their controller you get that same wi-fi direct connection to the network um but with this geforce now stuff i mean i'm thinking i need to look at this right um so i can't it's been a while since i've looked i i've not I've got a few friends friends on GeForce now and liking it. I, I it seems I like it's doing anything. okay. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm semi surprised. I'm not this, saying so. I'm not going to go play half-life back through again with the new graphics, but, mm -hmm. but 
It's actually, it's kind of weird. That in, in many ways, it's with the old graphics, right? Because there, there was a project that came, I think they finished it in the past year called Black Mesa. That yeah. was a reimagining of the original Half-Life in modern graphics and all that. And I've not played it. I actually own it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've never actually played it. But that thing, like if you want like that unbelievable 21st century, you know, look and feel, I, I believe that that's what you get there. This game is as you remember it. It's um, except that, you know, it works in widescreen. It can be exactly right. as you remember if I you want to. I, yeah, it's neat. And you have a choice. You can go and say, do I want the new graphics, the old graphics? You know, it, it's it's really well done. And it's the old menus and everything. Like these are the, this is the game. This is the game I remember. Yeah. Um, not this like the Steam. This is before Steam, right? It's yeah, yeah. really neat. Which, by the way, you know, that's where the money came from. Steam, I'd say, oh, yeah. Incredible service to us all to give us a repository for all of our games, but right, uh, right, a couple of dollars along the way. Yeah, and uh, I think it was yeah, it was Microsoft who said uh, sometime in the past couple of months, uh, Steam is the most successful online store in Windows. Hmm. Right. It's fair. One of the, I was yeah. the most successful online stores. Full stop. Like just. You know, yeah, nobody it didn't, it's loved, not been in shitified. It's yeah. um, nobody loves it's mobile app, mobile app stores. Like they're all horrible. It's Steam. Yeah, they're, they're all horrible. They're all horrible. And then you look at Steam and go, well, there's problems with Steam. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. No, it's you know what it is is that you go and look at your library and it's a catalog of love, right? It's just like, oh, I remember that one and that one, and oh, I should play that. It. I don't even have it installed. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, um, so I've spent a lot of time in Steam this past couple of days, which is weird because I hadn't looked at it in a while. It looks exactly the same. Um, uh, oh, and then uh, Call of Duty. Uh, we, we This doesn't happen this often, this far in advance, but we got a leak today that the next Call of Duty game, which we're all kind of wondering because they've milked their most successful two franchises to death, except they haven't because the next game is allegedly going to be Black Ops 6 because, wow. of course, it is. Yep. Uh, and we'll see. Wow. Um, there are guys from Call of Duty that say this isn't true, but of course they would say that. And uh, I don't know. It, it seems to be what it should be. It's going to be set in the Gulf, War, like the Gulf War type era uh, in the early 90s. Uh, Treyarch. I don't know. You know, we'll see. We'll see. I Not have. Play it, but I'm I, I, uh, I, yeah. So I, I bought the most recent Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 3. Yes. Modern Warfare 3. Modern Warfare 3. Installed it 18 times because God, seriously, <laughs> uh, no, like what, like why even preload a game now on day one? I think, I think I'm this is off the top of my head, so I, I don't mean to exaggerate, but I believe it was a 190 gigabyte download. Oh my God. Yep. And then I went to Seattle, right? And I came back and it was another, like, I don't, I don't remember. I don't want to say the number 50 gigabyte. It was like, what is, what, what you just replace the whole game every couple of days? <laughs> The new game uh, has been one of the lower reviewed Call of Duty games. Uh, I would imagine going back to what was a game called Ghost, although I really like Ghost for whatever that's worth. But um, I have spent approximately By two the way, minutes in this game. Half Life, nineteen ninety eight, yeah. two hundred fifty yeah. megabytes. Megabytes, right? Mm -hmm. I have MP3 files that are bigger than that. I know. Um, you know, no, I mean it's it's incredible. And by the way, that game was so innovative. Um, I it, 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 you can still see it. I mean, I it, it, yes, the graphics are dated, I guess, but I, that game is still very playable. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So there you go. There you go. We're just we're just biding our time until January. We can start wondering when Activision Blizzard games are going to start showing up on, uh, <laughs> on Game Pass, that. right? That's it. That's all we're doing. We're treading water here. Get through the holidays. See, I think Paul, if you were, you know, you did have, I don't know, what what is your number? Fifty million in the bank. I think you just yeah. sit back and play Call 50 of Duty million. all the time. Five million in 50, the bank would do. Five, <laughs> just, you know, you just play Call of Duty all day. You know what? Except that I, I, I don't know that that's true anymore. Because yeah. That might have been true a few years ago. I, 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 I paid 70 bucks for this game. I, like I said, I installed it multiple times by my estimation. And I just look at it and I'm like, I am, I'm so excited to see these maps. They look great. And I'm like, I don't really want to play Not this. the mood. You broke the addiction. <laughs> it's weird. I, 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 Half-Life though, I'm going to town on this thing. Half-Life's yeah. fantastic. Straight nostalgia. Eventually yep. though, you got to put the controller down and, and write something. And it's not yeah. just to yeah. make a living. That's right. It's, 
It's because you. Yeah, and if that's your concern, I strongly recommend playing Halo Infinite. Nothing will want to make you put the controller down more <laughs> than playing the controller that game. Down. Oh, it's it's like it was designed for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just I want to ask our audience, you know, you pay uh, 60 bucks, maybe 70 bucks 70 bucks now, by the way, right? Yeah, for a for a game that will get you uh, 10 months of uh, co great content, H hundreds of hours of content from Twit. Um, but the game, you know, you feel bad afterwards. You have fun, but you feel bad afterwards with Twit. You can play a game and listen to Twit and feel good because yeah. you got something done. I'm just, uh, this is my pitch to join Club Twit. $7 a month, $84 a year. Uh, costs less than a latte in Las Vegas, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> yep. Ooh, man. Uh, That's a pretty good latte. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, don't ever. Do you, make, do you, do you have to like take out a, like a mortgage or something when you go there now? Oh, it's, it's like what? You know, it used to be they made so much Seattle money like in this. gambling. That they'd have, you know, four dollar lobsters and buffet all you can eat buffets. Yeah, but now everyone comes for the shows. They come yeah. for, you know, they figured all this it stuff. out. Oh, we can make that much money in gambling and charge you a thousand dollars a night for the hotel room. Hey, this profit. was the first city I'd ever visited where that you went to the ATM machine and they just give you fifties. And this is like in the nineties. Oh, Paul. Like it's only you know, hundos now. Hundreds now? Yeah. Are you kidding? Is oh yeah. Hundreds? That's oh. all you get. You in can't fact, spend this anywhere. I always remember well, to go to there. the ATM before I get to the casinos because yeah, incredible. all you're gonna get is hundos. They do have bill breakers, which is hysterical. They have to, I guess. Bill breakers. Bill breakers. It's a little machine you put that's the, what the uh in. That's what the cigarette girls are doing. Yeah, now. they're they're, they're breaking bill your breaking. bills. See, uh, they didn't lose their jobs. They're fine. See this fine content. You could you could get this ad free. <laughs> you can get extra material like hands on windows in the club. You get the club twit Discord, which is incredible. You get the the live feed of everything that's going on before and after shows, not just the shows. You get a whole lot for that seven bucks, but mostly you get that warm and fuzzy feeling right here, right in the chest, that you're helping out, keeping these fine people employed. And I don't just mean the behind the scenes people, even our hosts, you know, they all they all get a a meager stipend, but a stipend nonetheless. <laughs> Enough to buy a latte. I appreciated Vegas. the free chicken this month. Um. <laughs> uh, some of them more meager than others. I just, uh, I just want to put it a pitch, a little plug. Twit.tv slash club twit. We love having you in the club. Uh, it is a great group of people, and uh, I'd love to have all of you in it. So if you're not a member yet, please help us out. Twit.tv slash club twit. The back of the book coming up next. Mr. Paul Therott kicks it off with his tip of the week. Yes, uh, Richard, I forgot to mention to you before the show, but I see you saw it, so that's good. I, <laughs> so, you know, I pay attention. I'm good for you. Uh, so Ignite's over. Um, oh, but wow, that's has, a tip. Has that's been, good. Yep. No, that's okay. So the, and, and I picked this week. No. So, um, but uh, the important thing is uh, you don't have to be, go, and that's good because most people didn't, um, because most people couldn't. Um, Sold out. Microsoft does this, you know, they record most of the sessions. It's actually not all the sessions. That was slightly controversial this year. I think it was an issue with uh, recording equipment, frankly. Yeah. I don't, there was so much stuff going parallel. on. So many things. Because I think a lot of people are like, oh, that's where the secret stuff's happening. It's like, no, I, I, I just think they, you know, it's going to get better each year. But they do it. They've done this for a while. Uh, they've done a great job of this. So every, not everything, most things that occur at the show are recorded. You can go back and uh, go to the Ignite site. You can go to YouTube, but go to the Ignite site because, when you go there, you get you can get the uh, presentations when they're available, transcripts, um, and whatever other materials they might have, and, and you can download the videos. You can stream or download whatever. I mean, it's it's a great way to. I I spend I'll spend weeks now, not every single day, all day, but like you know, going through and cherry picking. For example, I'm watching if you can believe this, a series of videos about the new Outlook, and the reason I'm doing that is because this is actually kind of a weird thing that's happening right now in the Microsoft space where they have this product. That everyone on the commercial side, which is the Outlook user base, hates it. And there are some Q&A sessions, especially where they kind of explain what they're doing. And they, we talked about this, I think, last week, the week before. There's a roadmap now. They're going to try to bring this thing up to speed. But this is very much tied into the Copilot AI strategy. This is why this thing is out in the world right now. Um, and so there's a lot of that stuff in there. So uh, just totally worth doing. Um, Richard and I did some stuff at the show. I, I I've only have two major <laughs> interviews to talk about, unfortunately. But... I interviewed uh, Amanda Silver and Garth Seth, both of whom are in the dev dev space at Microsoft, uh, Visual Studio and .NET, um, respectively. Um, 
those are available on the Throt.com YouTube channel if you want to watch those. And Richard, you've got some interviews as well. Yeah, they're all going to be published as run as is in January and February. The first one mm -hmm. will be with Aaron Chappell, who is one of the VPs in the Azure core team, which they call the infrastructure and so forth. And, but we were talking broadly about the concerns of, uh, of sysadmins working in Azure and the sort of overwhelming nature of that and dealing with restricted budgets and just what it's like to be a sysadmin. She's going to, you know, I always do a, what's it going to be like next year show. And then I literally followed up with her version of that because I just thought her take was super powerful. Uh, a non-Microsoft person that I interviewed was actually Gil Peckelman, who's out of Tel Aviv. Uh, his company, Atera, has got essentially a co-pilot for IT. Uh, so very much built the, using large language models to facilitate help desk and then to actually take action. So they have sets of scenarios where, hey, I want to change my password. And you as the uh, sysadmin can configure it so that the software can actually deliver the change of password. Or if it's a more complex problem, say like complaining about a slowdown or a blue screen, it'll actually pre-do a bunch of the diagnostic work and then ship it to you with the diagnostic work done so that you can uh, act on the resolving service tickets. So cool piece it Sounds of like something that might be acquired by a bigger company uh, uh, whose name remains... Anyway, uh, Gail was brilliant, smart, fast, uh, really complicated piece of software, but we did some good things with that. And the nice. inimitable Brendan Burns, um, he, he of Kubernetes fame, led the Kubernetes project at Google for many years and then came over to Microsoft and spread the love there too. I always thought he should be a technical fellow. And mm -hmm. then when talking to him, especially this particular show, he's a VP. He runs a team that is part of making Microsoft a better open source organization. You know, that, that his teams are, are sort of exemplars of the way you write software that is cross-platform and that it works across different communities, that kind of thing. So it's a really powerful conversation just about thinking cloud natively uh, in the broader sense of the word and, and how we can all get better at that. So. Uh, and it's, it's just another one of those personalities. I, I put Anders Halsberg in that same category. Like, yeah. you come away going, this guy's thinking about hard stuff all the time. And he's got a kind way of letting you know you haven't thought about it enough. Mm -hmm. so, nice. Uh, really fun interview. You won't get that one till about February. But it'll, we'll be talking about it on the show as they come along for sure. Yeah. There you go. Cool. Very nice. But you still um, have, Paul, you're not off. You have an app tip, app pick of the week. Yeah, and it, well, I, I've already sort of discussed well, it, it, but I have to talk yeah. about it again because um, over it. the weekend, Half-Life, the original, was free, and they had a really deep sale uh, on all the uh, other Half-Life titles. Um, if you look at it today, it's 99 cents. It's still a good deal, folks, just saying. But they have bundles that include, I, I got the bundle with all of the Half-Life games, but when I say all of the Half-Life games, first of all, Half-Life 2, Opposing Force, Blue Shift, like I mentioned, uh, Half Life Restored, uh, uh, Half Life Two, Episode One and Two, Deathmatch Source, which was the original actual Deathmatch. Um, these games were all under a buck each, right? Half Life Alex, which is the modern VR game that came out a year ago, I think, uh, pretty recently, is cool. normally sixty bucks. That's on sale for twenty dollars. Um, you, uh, this is. This is guaranteed fun. It's guaranteed. It's so cheap. Um, you would be stupid not to. No, I don't mean to say that, but uh, it's. Uh, it's Alice is out in twenty twenty. So. Oh, it's that long ago. Okay, I'm getting I older, so. No, I can't tell I'm more. I'll blame that. Yeah. So, I, 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 I know we already beat this to death, but um, God help you if you've not played any of these games. But even if you have, um, you need to you need to experience this again. <laughs> I love it. So so good. So. Good. <laughs> What's the this character? This might be the video game world's Lord of the Rings or something. I What's the character it's... you're playing? What's his name? Gordon Freeman. Gordon Freeman. That's right. Freeman. I always I collect these in case I ever get pulled over. I want to have some pseudonyms ready to hand. Yeah. Because you never want to pause when you say my name is. You want to be ready. He's right. like Gordon Freeman. They should. Uh, the actor who played Walter White on Breaking Bad could should have played him in the movie. Um, he would have been perfect. Brian There's Cranston and uh, Gordon Brian Freeman Cranston. separated at birth. Mm -hmm. What is coming up on Run as Radio, Mr. Uh, Richard Campbell? Well, it's just today, a bit of an indulgent show for me. Janelle Crothers is one of my go-to ladies 
Uh, she'd been uh, a SMIN for many years. She'd been at Microsoft for a few now. And she was working in an area of Microsoft on the Azure team that I knew nothing about, the Azure Operator Nexus. Mm. So this is a set of tools that Azure, that Microsoft makes available to telcos. It was initially a collaboration between Azure and oh, AT&T. How weird. Oh, how funny. They have a bunch of duplicated infrastructure and so forth. And for, in a lot of ways, and Janelle was very politically correct in explaining this, it was teaching cloud as architecture to telcos. And so it's expanded a great deal. And I don't think it's going to impact a lot of people necessarily. Although, you know, if you have an interaction with a telco, they're probably using Nexus at some point there. But it speaks to just how much cloud technologies and cloud architecture has permeated our industry. That, uh, yeah, the telcos too are all on board and that's Operator Nexus. Uh, PTSD on this one. PTSD? Oh, on the booze? Mm -hmm. Brown liquor time. You have mm -hmm. one dinner. One little dinner. You get two shows of whiskey out of it, right? <laughs> one, one big dinner. Big and dinner. <laughs> big dinner. a and fairly that, impressive uh, alcohol experience, I have to say. Hang over there. So, and we talked about our favorite last week, which was that Maker's Mark uh, Cellar Editions. But one of the others we tried that night was the Willet, the Willet Purple Tops. Now, there's a bunch of different Purple Tops, but the particular one we had was the Willet Weeded 8. Uh, and the Willet Distillery is an interesting one because it's not ancient per se. The, the, uh, the Willet Distilling Company is actually founded in 1936, so just a few years after Prohibition, by a, a gentleman by the name of Willet, uh, Lambert Willet uh, in Louisville. Uh, although they actually set up the distillery in Bardstown, which is due south of, of Louisville. It's one of the big it's collections. The epicenter of the whole Kentucky yeah. bourbon trail I, or whatever. I would argue there's two, right? There's definitely okay. the southern route, which is the Bardstown, Heaven Hills, that area. And then yep. on the and then going east out of Louisville, you have the Frankfurt region, and that's Sazerac, Happy, all yeah. of the guys are over there. But be that as it may. Um the company has pretty much been owned by the Willett family one way or the other the whole time, although they've gone through some twitches. Uh, it's interesting also that they, the Willett family traces their lineage to pre-U.S. Revolutionary War, right? Like they've been in the U.S. a long time. And in fact, it was a, a, a Willett that moved to Kentucky as it was becoming a state. And they did get involved in whiskey in the 1800s. Uh, along with other key personalities or key families in the in the bourbon industry, like Moore and Frank, uh, some of those original names. So the fact that they set up the distillery after Prohibition was more about the jobs during and come apart pre when Prohibition came into play. And now they were sort of com coming back together. Now that it's over, built a new distillery. Off they go. Uh, it doesn't mean they make money. Uh, they were they they struggled along for the first few for a few few decades making whiskey. Uh, when the um, energy crisis hit in the 1970s, they shut down the distilleries for making whiskey and started making ethanol, use, using straight corn to make gasohol because that was going to be the new world. You know, until they made the deal with OPEC and the gas prices went to, to normal, and then they pretty much just shut down in 1981. Uh, and it languished for a couple of years, except for the granddaughter, Martha. Uh, so this granddaughter uh, had married a, Swedish, a Norwegian man by the name of uh, Evan Kulsevin, and they kicked it back. They, they, the facility had been shut down, was still in the family. Nautilus is still in the family as well. They rename it the Kentucky Bourbon Distillers. And what they're really doing is they're bottling all the old barrels that had been sitting for a few years since they had shut down in the late 70s to make ethanol. So they had a bunch of old, I would have loved to get my hands on some of this, this old bourbon that they were bottling. And so their bottling system became very good. And uh, as they were starting to deplete their rack houses, because they still weren't distilling themselves, they started buying barrels from other distilleries and aging it in their rack houses. And ultimately ended up setting a few brands, some of which you may know of. By the 1990s, they were releasing Rowan Creek, Noah's Mill, Kentucky Vintage, uh, they ultimately would also make uh, whiskeys called Old Bardstown and Johnny Drum. Again, all sort of license deal, co-brand deals, different distilleries and so forth. It wasn't until the 2000s that they actually started cranking up the old stills again. 
And so uh, as whiskey became hip and bourbon doubly so, in the 2010s, they built a visitor center, did some big renovations, so forth, and they restarted their old stills in 2012 and renamed back to the Willet Distillery from uh, the KBD, Kentucky Bourbon Distillers. And uh, ramp up they did. Within the first two years, they'd barrel, they 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 racked ten thousand barrels by twenty seventeen. It was twenty five thousand barrels. Uh, they still do a bunch of contract bottling, and again, these are whiskeys you may have heard of. I've certainly had bottles of Black Maple Creek and Cunnock Ridge and Old Pogue. They do the bottling for Mickners, both their rye, their single batch, all of those. But they haven't, they weren't well known for their own whiskeys until just the past few years when they made the Willet Pot Still. Because they have that original pot still from the 1930s. Their distillations, they have a single distillation stack, a column still, which is your quick up to about 60%. Then they have a doubler, which is a kind of simpler still that runs in, in, in conjunction with the column still while it's running. And then they finish in this old pot still. And so the first time I really met a Willet was their pot still edition, which literally they made a bottle look a pot, like a pot still. And that is not this product. They're now getting to better aged products. And so there's been a few family editions and so forth, but this is sort of their first real big, uh, uh, expensive hit. So where pasta was very popular and did well, the, uh, will it weeded is very much like maker's mark is 65% corn, 20% wheat, 15% barley. Uh, it's barreled at 57%. It's bottled at about 54%. Uh, it's an eight year, bourbon, which is fairly unusual. They tend to be aged younger than that. Um, some would say it's actually closer to a nine, but this is all pretty subjective. If you can find it for MSRP, it's $250. Uh, oh. You will not for MSRP. The last time I could find it at a specialty shop that would, you know, that had a few to ship, they were 600 bucks. Hmm. Um, and that's, this is good. This is not that good. <laughs> like, come on that's a lot if somebody's gonna pay for it for you you should taste it don't turn it it's down. good but it's not six hundred dollars a bottle good is what you're saying no, it, even not sure it would, would be, what at they, what's with the at purple bucks, this would be on my shelf it's a it's, yeah. it, it's part of their family edition so yeah. as they started doing this family and you can find a few of their family reserves they all have this purple wrapper on the top um, what I find interesting with this particular bottle is the dark bottle with the gold lettering. So it's got a very it's distinct. Very, it's a kind of a pretty bottle. I mean, it is attractive. It's hard yeah. to read in the dark. I'll tell you that much. Like, I, I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm drinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had, we had some help with that, as I recall. Yes, he had a light. So he'd hold the bottle out for us and then he'd light it up. Oh, that's hysterical. Little... Yep. How many different had... kinds of whiskeys did you guys drink? I think it was just the two. Oh, we, okay. we we had cocktails first, and then we polished off a fairly nice bottle of wine. <laughs> you know, I try we, to be as tra as transparent as you know can be, but maybe maybe we don't talk about this too much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, the meal, the, the, the food. Dear the Google, how to yeah. tell if my husband is having an emotional affair? With how to remove day? this day from my history? <laughs> Well, and it, that they had hangovers in more than one the entire week. We were essentially stopped. Oh God! Of, you know, yeah, this is when I true. say I am glad I don't drink. I don't ever have to deal with this. Oh, no, it impairs my judgment. I was at dinner at my brother-in-law's uh, last week, and he pours me a, a nice glass of uh, whiskey, of some sort of good whiskey. It was delicious. Yep. It had a skull on it. I think. It was like a Halloween whiskey, I guess. But uh, yeah, the top had a skull. <clears throat> but he was mostly proud of his balls. His um, right? his uh, <laughs> no, <we're all>. he <laughs> he Prison. had a special ice ball maker. Oh, I see. Yeah. And um, and it did it in such a way that there it was completely clear. Which yes. he says it doesn't yes, yes, melt yes. as fast that way. So it's better. Yeah, you're, you're, you need whiskey stones, really. But, uh, well, but that's a big thing. No, the, the stones never clear. get it cold enough. Stones are like lukewarm. I don't like stones. Uh, hmm. But the, the yeah, freeze transition keeps things cold. He does. He has. He bought some fancy thing to make these whiskey ice balls. Yep. 
I've seen, yeah. A lot of uh, high-end cocktail uh, yeah. restaurants will, will do this. It's hysterical. And, yeah. <laughs> it's distilled water. It's fine. Yeah. Rich, you say drink it neat like a man. It's not that. You're paying no. a substantial amount of money for a flavor experience. Yeah. Why would you suppress it by making it cold? Not but, to suppress it, but make it worse over time. But, but, yeah. but you know? I have heard, in fact, it might be you who told me, a little dash of water in a whiskey. That's right. Opens little, it up. A little eyedropper. Just, oh, uh, yeah. It depends. So there's a, get, it, get it to where you want it. I hope when we talked, we did all that conversation about making Scottish whiskey, that there's water introduced to whiskey all of the time. And there is an argument for the, the certain congener compounds that will only break down with additional water. Yeah. That's then the there's argument. Also a, there's also a point to make that at a certain level of alcohol, it's like a very bright light. Even those other things there, you can't see them. So adding a little water can allow other yeah. to go yeah. up. It's like uh, sushi. If you, if the guy makes you a little sushi piece of sushi, you don't dip it in something. You 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 take. He's giving it to you perfect. Well, so what you're saying is those ice balls are like sunglasses for your whiskey. <laughs> for well, your for your uh, yeah. They're suppressing the whiskey, <laughs> yeah. uh, and maybe that makes you more comfortable. Listen, drink your whiskey the way you want to. Yeah, exactly. You ask me. How do you like? I it? was embarrassed because I don't drink, and I and one. I I, I kind of went. Uh, well, I, I'm not. I'm not. But I had to have a sip because I mean I don't I don't I don't drink religiously, but I don't drink, yeah. and I had to have a sip, and it was it was still it was tasty, but uh, and he had very very have, nice ice balls, but but the first and the first hit is always going to be the loudest, right? Like there's right. a strong argument for the second sip, just because you're it's going to taste different. That's and the, the one where I lose my hearing and, fourth, and the world goes. And the fifth, fifth the second, sixth, and seventh. The second tip was good. More is going to be better, right? Like nothing's yeah, that's true. like excess. Nothing, right. Nothing tastes better than excess, Leo. <laughs> you know? I was talking to somebody the other day and I said something. I can't, I, can't, I can't remember what I said, but she said, did you just say you had a lot of acid? I said, yes, I did. But that's not what I was talking about. <laughs> Right. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> call me is Shirley. this the hospital? Yes, it is. But it has nothing to do with this conversation. Um, okay. Will it? We did eight-year bourbon. If somebody, yeah. So the rule is if somebody offers it to you, don't turn it down. But don't pay 250 yes. bucks a bottle for it. Yeah. Much less 600 Much less 600 uh, And very likely, like Pappy and others of these special editions, you will only find this in high-end restaurants at absurd prices. Yeah. Right. Right. <clears throat> Very nice. I can't wait to do it again. I'm, I want to yeah. make this mistake again. I'd like to do it right next time. Uh, actually, I feel I'm, like I did do it right this time. I, I wanted to get past this particular meal with these two whiskeys because they were both an experience and new experiences for both of us. And that was it's great. nice. I, I wanted to get past it as well, but also just like not on a gurney. Yeah. Would have been good. Um, I, I do imagine but, that there aren't many times that Mr. Campbell gets a new experience. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Thing and you expect next week, I will get a I will I will be focused on a more <clears throat> pro, uh, brown liquor or something. Next week, I will not be here, so make right. it as approachable as you want. Are you I going will, to Providence? I am going on a retreat oh. that involves no digital anything. I even had to replace I, my Apple Watch with a Timex. I see, so I will not only I so will be out of touch if you need help. Blink twice, help me, help me, help and then um, help me, help me, help you know send a telegram or something. No, something. yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you reach. I'll read you. I'll read you my Google News feed. You can find out what's going on. <laughs> if it's another Sam Altman weekend, I am screwed. <laughs> uh, Where's it? Where is this taking place? Yeah, it's uh, actually it's just up the road a piece. Uh, Jason Howell did it last a year ago. Uh, then my wife did it last month. It's some sort of. It's a psychological. Some I don't know. You're just you're going to the Sphere in Las Vegas, aren't you? Yes, I admit it. <laughs> That's all you do. You're going to see worship you at the feet of Bono. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, I won't be here. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> who's. Do I think Mike is doing the show. He likes to Probably. do Windows Weekly. Uh, but I will be back the following week. So please do not uh, lament. I should pick something. I should pick something special for my kid. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Micah drinks either. By the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you do pick something, make it gluten free. I is this? That. Are you? Are you in Utah? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you get to a certain age, Paul, and and you'll know this soon, uh, yeah. it, you don't want to lose any more brain cells. It's like, okay, I think I'm going to need them all now. 
And uh, I don't want. I just don't want to do anything to accelerate what is already yeah. falling. I might apart. have already passed. So far, I passed that point that I don't really <laughs> care anymore. But I. But yeah, no, I can see that. You and your wife have a lovely tradition. You have a nice mixed mm -hmm. cocktail, which she invents. You listen to music. Right. I see you. The first thing you set up in your new home is the music yep. center, so you can have your music nights. I think that's a beautiful thing. I like that. That's yeah, nice. Uh, and I don't drink to deprive my wife of exactly that pleasure. Well. <clears throat> I'm just that petty. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Paul Thorat, where will you find him? Besides Lower Mukunji, you will find him at Thorat.com. That is the site of his writing. Do become a premium membership uh, of the of the site. It's affordable and it's very valuable. There's all sorts of good stuff he puts behind that paywall. His books uh, are at leanpub.com, Windows and Everywhere, which is kind of a history of Windows through programming. Uh, the Field Guide to Windows 11, which has Windows 10 built right in, like one of those gums that squirts into your mouth. You take a bite of Windows <laughs> yes, 11 and right. the flavor then, center. You got a flavor center, Windows 10. Yeah. Uh, you set your price at leanpub.com. Richard Campbell is at runasradio.com. That's where .net rocks and run as radio. His two podcasts appear. He's also available to speak at your conference. Just provide a little bit of purple and he'll be there. I'm way. available to carry his bags. Uh, <laughs> well, I've only got one show left this year. The first week of December, Dev Intersection in Orlando. And then, uh, yep. wow. I'm going to be for a few weeks. Naturally, it's on the other side of the continent. Uh, yeah. it's, it couldn't just be, you know, nearby. In the warm zone, no doubt. Uh, yeah. well, I, I observe. already committed to London in January oh. and then Sydney two weeks later because that's yeah. the flight. Well, at least Sydney will be yeah. it'll be summertime. London in January sounds pretty chilly. Yeah. It'll be dark. Stay inside. Thank you, you two, and thanks to all of you who uh, joined us this week for Windows Weekly. Thanks especially to our club members who make this show possible. Um, we uh, do the show on Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1900 UTC. And we've decided uh, to at least put the shows up as we do them uh, on YouTube Live. So you can watch the behind-the-scenes production at YouTube Live. That's uh, uh, youtube.com slash twit. Uh, and if you if you schmish the bell or whatever it is the kids say, you'll get those notifications the minute we go live. I hate hearing you talk like that. I it's just I just it's just how YouTube works. Smash the bell. Smash the bell. <laughs> I don't want. Look, I get God, nothing I hate out that of it. Language. I don't. It's yeah. I get nothing out of it. So uh, sure. I, I'm just saying what you say, so that people can get a notification. It's for their it's for their good. Next, uh, the like the the thumbnail will be us going. <laughs> It is frequently, <laughs> by the way. I don't know if you've noticed your yeah. thumbnails lately. Mm -hmm. We have resorted to the, the shadiest, cheapest marketing sure. tricks we can find. It's going to be AI next time. It's AI Leo all the way down. <laughs> uh, you can uh, also, of course, get a copy of the show at twit.tv slash WW. Paul puts it on his site at therot.com. There's a YouTube channel dedicated to Windows Weekly. But the best way to do it is to subscribe if you go to twit.tv slash WW, you'll see some links to Pocket Casts and Google and Android and all that. But uh, we li I like Pocket Casts because once you subscribe, it just keeps downloading. So you always have a copy of Windows Weekly available for you. Uh, but do I subscribe. compulsively check the new episode feed on Pocket Cast every day. Yeah. Pocket Cast is great. What, we, what I found out releases. is that Apple, at least Apple's podcast app, and I bet many others, if you skip an episode, we'll stop downloading them. Oh, and uh, that's kind of annoying because then you go, oh, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. So I I use Pocket Casts. I say download. You know, you could say I download the most recent ten, delete them as I listen to them, so it doesn't fill up the the this device. But I think that works pretty well. Pocket Casts is very mm -hmm. flexible that way. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Richard. Thank Have you, a sir. great Thanksgiving. Now you, you already too. had your Thanksgiving, Richard. That's right. We, and we have our Thanksgiving in Jan in in October, October. like so. So you don't come down over the border and just knock on a random door saying, can I have some turkey? You don't, that would be. Listen, there's one of the advantages of living close to the other country is that <laughs> we score two Thanksgivings in a relatively short right. order. But actually we're hosting some Americans up here. So we're going to be oh, doing Oh, that's this. nice. 
uh, that's nice. We'll have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving. Paul, are you going to have people over, or is the, is the fam so coming in? We're, so tomorrow? we've always since we moved since we've been here, we've always done it at our house. My wife cooks uh, because we were in an apartment and weren't sure where we were going to be. We're actually going to go to my sister's house, but my wife's going to do all the cooking. <laughs> the, they specific my entire wow. family was like, they you, love how, you have to do the cooking. They love how Stephanie does it. Is there really a specialty it. besides the turkey? Is there a specialty that she has? Yeah, so everything is is the stuffing, but also she makes pies. Um, the whole thing, it's, mm, it's lovely, excellent. Yeah, lovely. It's, really, it's just perfect. All right, and we do have a request from the marketing department as we wind the show up. If you would all give mm -hmm. me your thumbnail shocked photos so we can use it. Yeah. I should never have seen it done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Hey there, I'm Micah Sargent. Look, as a geek myself, I feel it's only fair if I admit something. We can be kind of hard to shop for. So what do you get for that geek in your life who has everything already? Well, a Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With a Club Twit subscription, they're going to get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, exclusive outtakes, behind the scenes and special content, and I love this, exclusive shows like my own Hands on Mac and Hands on Windows from Paul Therott, as well as the Untitled Linux Show. So purchase your geek's gift at twit.tv slash clubtwit and they will thank you every day.